And we are live. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the DJ Zero Cool Podcast. Uh, Jordan Griffin, he is running a little bit late, so stepping in and helping me out with things will be uh, our producer and my little brother, uh, Randon. He'll be... Uh, You'll hear him chime in on the mic. We do not have a camera for him. We're still uh, we're still in the process of putting a couple of things together for the studio. But there are a couple of things we can go over while we wait for Jordan to show up. Uh, number one, we are brought to you by uh, joinplayboy.com. Just click the link, support Zero Cool Podcast, and subscribe. Uh, you have a custom gallery that I'll have put up every week um, that you can just click on and check out. Uh, if you join, you are directly, excuse me, directly supporting this podcast the uh, proceeds from that go directly to us and basically helps me pay for my brother to produce this show and any equipment that uh, we need to pick up along the way and basically reimburse myself for uh, for buying all this stuff a uh, couple other things uh, we can go over as well uh, if you were at brothers last night thank you for coming out uh, we had a great turnout for UFC 260 it was a little bit lighter um, totally understandable there was a couple of, of fights that were dropped from this card so uh, I, I definitely saw that, you know, I was really excited for the Brian Ortega um, Volkanovsky fight. I was bummed out that that one got uh, that got pulled. But Volkanovsky catching COVID was part of the reason for that. So, uh, you know, hopefully they reschedule that fight real soon. Uh, we're going to be doing UFC 261 again over at Brothers next month. I believe that is April 24th. And Jordan just texted me. He said he's 14 minutes away. So... When he gets here, Randon will uh, will readjust that camera, and uh, we'll, we'll get everything set up for him. In the meantime, there's a couple of things I'm going to go over with you guys. Uh, we're going to recap UFC 260 and a couple of other things I have to get through. Also, if you're watching this on Facebook, as we are doing this live on Facebook, afterwards we upload this to YouTube, uh, to my YouTube channel, um, you can talk live directly. So what's going to happen is if there's something you want to say or if you have a question about anything, you can post that in the comment section and we will be able to he'll Brandon will be able to read that to me or he can get on the mic and just say it to me and he can be in my ear and, and talk to me about that. And I can maybe elaborate on a couple of things that people may or may not have questions on about the fights. Uh, where was I? Oh, UFC 260 at Brothers last night. Great turnout. Uh, there was a lot going on last night. Uh, the Sweet 16 bracket for college basketball was going on, so there was a great crowd for that. There was a lot of people there for the UFC fights. Um, what else was going on? Bucks were playing last night. I don't know what the results are. I don't follow basketball at all. Uh, it's just not my thing. MMA, soccer, it's kind of like my my main uh, my main sports that I follow. But uh, I know the Bucks are doing really well. Uh, I think they've only lost like 14. They're 24 and 14 or 25 and 14 the last I saw. And that's off the top of my head. Also want to give a shout out to uh, Chicago Nick, a good friend of mine who is, and Jordan's still texting me. Hold on a second here. Uh, okay, I'm on my way 14 minutes out. Oh, Randon, would you do me a favor? Would you, oh, I'm not logged in. Logged in. I totally forgot to do this before we started. I was going to repost the uh, the live stream to my personal page. There it is. We'll just do this while we're on air. Because I'm totally professional. How do I repost this again? Save video? No, I don't want to save video. Randon, are we still live? Yeah, we're live. Okay. Share. There it is. Uh, share public. Write post. Okay. I don't want to share this to my fan page. I want to share this. Shit I could have done before we were on air. Well, that is my bad. Discard. You know, they changed this around and I got confused on how this shit works now. Oh, there I am. So I can share this. Boom. We're going to do this live with me talking into Siri to this. Uh, Jordan Griffin is running late. In the meantime, we'll be recapping UFC 260. Tune in. That kind of screwed it up. There we go. And boom, posted. So yeah, everyone else can can tune in as well. Um, so yeah, if you're watching this live right now, uh, if you got questions, comments, or shit, if you just want to talk about something in general, uh, leave a comment in the comment section. Randon will, will chime in at some point during a break. Back to what I was saying. Um, shout out to Chicago Nick. 
um, he came up from Chicago, came watch the fights with with Cali and the crew and I from Rufus Sport. Also, big shout out to Dan Gonzalez and uh, Scott Cushman. Scott, who's done the, the podcast in the past, uh, he came out and watched the fights. And it's always great to watch the fights with, with someone who has such a great knowledge uh, as a coach uh, of what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Um, the guy is just an amazing resource for knowledge. And, and I always appreciate whenever I get to get to watch fights with him. Also, whenever I get to spend time with Chicago, Nick, um, if you are in the Chicago area and you are watching this and you need personal training, uh, Shadow Personal Training, he's located 2618 Halstead in Chicago, Illinois. Um, the man is an amazing personal trainer. He's in amazing fitness. He's doing, a, I believe it's in September, he's going to Everest. And I think he's doing level two. We were talking about a, a little bit last night, uh, him and his girlfriend, Amanda. Um, great couple. Um, great personal trainers. If you if you're in the Chicago area, he is the guy to train with. He was at Equinox as a personal trainer, uh, a very elite gym down in Chicago. Um, yeah, an amazing guy. Also, furthermore, um, I do mixes for Jägermeister uh, for their behind the shot mix. Uh, their their behind the shot mix series. They are going to be releasing a mix I did about two weeks ago. Um, this upcoming week on their Mixcloud account. So if you go to Mixcloud, uh, Jägermeister behind the shot, you can totally search it up. They have a number of DJs from around the country that have made mixes, and they're usually with a theme. Uh, my theme was diversity. Basically what Matthias, their, their rep for Jägermeister had said, he goes, I want you to match up stuff that shouldn't really go together, but kind of make it enough where it's kind of danceable and enjoyable. Uh, the example he gave me was Slayer and, and Justin Bieber. Well, that is an outlandish one to to put together. Uh, I I think I put together a, a good selection of mashups uh, that people will enjoy. There's like Gary Wright uh, versus Kanye West. Um, there's a bunch of them that are on there that that I can't really think of off the top of my head. But it's a great mix. Uh, it'll be released next week. I'll be posting that on Twitter, fan page, Instagram, all that shit. So. I have something for you guys to jam out to. What else do we got going on? Oh, we are going to be off next week. Uh, Brandon and I did not realize when we were booking our guest that next week is Easter. So we were supposed to have uh, Donnie Polinsky, a.k.a. Uh, Dr. P. He was supposed to be on. He's from uh, Primer 55, SOAR, Reverend Epicurean, um, MOD Classic. He's also the head of Force 5 Records. He's got a ton of stuff that he's going to be doing. So we just moved that to one week ahead, which I believe is April 11th, whatever the Sunday is, uh, the following, whatever the following Sunday is, I believe. Uh, so he's going to be on the following week. Uh, we'll have DJ E. Rich after that. And I should have a surprise guest who's also in the MMA community. He'll be probably recapping UFC 261 with us and talking about some of his fights and, and fights that he's had in the past. Hopefully, uh, we will confirm that in the next week or two. Uh, what's next on my list? The Kick Light Tournament through Rufus Sport is happening April 10th. If you'd like to sign up, you can do that through uh, wako.com or .net. Uh, registration is through there. Uh, they have an amazing turnout every time they've done this. I will be there just hanging out and cheering everyone on because I have not been training enough. Lastly, Shout out to the homie, Emmanuel Sanchez. He'll be fighting in the Featherweight Grand Prix Tournament. He'll be fighting Patricio Pitbull for the 145 title. He's also in the Million Dollar Tournament. This is the semifinals. So if he wins, we've we've talked about Emmanuel on the podcast before. If he wins this, not only does he win the title, he moves into the finals for the 145 Grand Prix, Grand Prix Tournament. He will defend his title in the finals then. And then he will, oh, granted, if he wins... He would be defending his title in the finals, and he would also win a million dollars after he'd win the finals. So we want him to win this. Uh, a great coach, great fighter, great all-around person, um, someone we'd very much like to have on the podcast. Uh, hopefully we can do that soon. Also, shout out to Jordan Newman, who will also be fighting on that card as well. He'll be fighting on the prelims. He'll be fighting at middleweight and also fighting on the same card. A couple other quick announcements. Shout out to Bobby from Champions. Uh, him and I share the same birthday. I want to give him a birthday shout out because we are not going to be uh, doing this this week or around the birthday, which I believe is Tuesday. Yeah, it's hard for me to believe. I'm going to be turning a year older in two days. <laughs> but uh, yeah, shout out to Bobby from Champions. Uh, we share uh, we share the same birthday, Irish twins as they would call it. 
And also shout out to uh, my grandmother and Randon, our producer's grandmother, uh, Mary Lou. She also shares the same birthday as me as well. I want to wish her a happy birthday as well. Now, let's get into UFC 260. Randon, just out of curiosity, did you watch this at all? You no. you can talk on the mic. No, <laughs> He's shaking his head at me. He's like, no, I, I didn't watch it at all. We do have to get you out there one of these days. You gotta come hang out with us for one of these fights. If you're gonna be okay. doing if you're gonna be producing this, you gotta at least come and join us. And I mean, you did for a hot minute come train with us, and so did Rebecca. So but uh it was a great card uh through and through. Again, I was bummed out that a number of the fights got scrapped. I'm taking a look at this. The uh Johnny Walker fight got got canceled. Uh, the Volkanovski Ortega fight got canceled. Ronda Marcos was supposed to fight on that along with Jessica Penne. Those both got scrapped due to COVID. Well, there's a couple of people who tested COVID, tested positive for COVID. And then uh, Alfonso Menafield, he was supposed to fight Knight or William Knight. That got removed as well. Um, he ended up he ended up getting a Von Flute choke. That was that kicked off the main card. Um, he got that I think in the first minute of the fight. I'm taking a look at this right now. Yeah, Von Flute choke in the first minute, and that's an OSP. That's an OSP go to. They've been they've been joking about if they're gonna rename that after OSP because he's nailed that so many times now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that he ended up uh, he ended up catching that in the first round. Uh, who fought after that? We'll say uh, Jillian Robertson fought Miranda Maverick. That was a three round. Jillian, she's fought a bunch. During COVID, um, she came out. She was getting pieced up, I think. She was getting tagged at range. And I remember she she lost the first round, if I recall correctly. Second round, she ended up taking Maverick down and holding her down for a while. And then third round, she ended up getting take, taken down. And she reversed, but she ended up still getting pounded out. Uh, so she lost that fight, I believe, two two to one in rounds but she was looking good she was looking great on her feet i think maverick was just out striking her um was maybe the better striker uh robertson was a black belt in jiu-jitsu and i think maverick is a brown belt and going to the ground i thought jillian kind of had the advantage but hopefully she, you know she'll be back but she's fought a lot i think maybe take some time off and get back in there soon but uh hopefully uh she's a she's a friend of the gym so hopefully she's back soon uh thomas almeida versus sean o'malley uh that was also on the main card that was a 135 fight i was really interested in this card i thought this was a great litmus test for uh shane o'malley uh fighting thomas almeida um pretty early in the first round you saw almeida uh chopping at o'malley's legs and o'malley's pretty long for that division um he's like 510 or 511 something like that but he's smaller so like he's taller but he's not as thick as the rest of the guys in that division so beating up his legs is actually a pretty good strategy he almost had a walk off walk off uh, tko in the first round uh he sat out made it down i think he head kicked him and he hit him with a right so i think it was a lead leg and then hit him with a right hand and put him down and then almeida fell up against the cage and you saw him put his hands up, and O'Malley started walking away like it was a walk-off. And whoever the ref was didn't call it. And so Shane ended up, or excuse me, Shane O'Malley ended up going back again, trying to finish him off, I think with like a minute left in that round. And then it took him till he had about a minute left in the third round. He ended up sitting him down again in the last round. And uh, eventually the ref called it with a TKO. I believe he hit him with a counter left on that one. Don't quote me on that. Without having the footage in front of me, it's hard to recall it off the top of my head. Plus, I had a Guinness too. I don't really drink that much anymore, so I was a little loopy. I was like, I remember at one point, like I got up and I, I was like, oh, I was like, I had a beer and I'm a little drunk. It's interesting when you're not DJing or I haven't been club DJing at all, um, with all the COVID restrictions, and not doing like ten shots a night with all your friends while you're DJing has just made me an absolute lightweight. Uh, we'll move on to the co-main event, uh, Tyron Woodley, uh, who's a... F oh! <laughs> Jordan's calling. We'll put him on speakerphone. Jordan, what is the good word, brother? What do I type? Uh, 5082. 5082. Call. 
All right, give me a second. I'm going to hang up with you, and or I'm going to switch over, and I'll, I'll buzz you in. Hey, is that letting you in? Let's see. Unhold. Hey, did it let you in? Pull on the door. Yeah, go to the fifth floor. It's 508. All right. Randon, you want to double check and make sure the door's open? Yeah, sure. Thanks, man. Um, where was I? Oh, Tyron Woodley. Uh, Randon is going to go make sure that uh, that Jordan gets in here okay. Um, in the meantime, we'll just continue to recap UFC 260. Uh, Luke versus Woodley. I, uh, I had said going into this, uh, Tyron had looked... He's not tired. He's not anything. It, it just he wasn't pulling the trigger the way he typically has in the past. He's a real explosive fighter. I saw him moving back a lot up against the fence. This one, he came out swinging and that's why I wanted to see out of him. And he basically, it, it looked like he was ready to go out on a shield and he came out swinging, came out swinging hard. Um, the one thing I would say uh, about Woodley is that it looked like he was looking for his one shot to knock out Luke and he had connected at one point and I remember seeing Luke stunned and I was like this is it our boy Woodley he's back he's gonna put Luke down and then he got cracked with a right hand I believe right behind the ear and you saw Woodley's legs go stiff and he backs up against the fence and he's trying to fight Luke off um, it was very obvious that it, it was the beginning of the end but you saw glimpses of hope with Woodley where he was fighting back and he was he was defending and then eventually Woodley gets sat down uh Luke sinks in a uh, a Darce choke um immediately and I I, I looked at it and I was like ah oh, that looks like it's right under the chin and sure enough within 30 seconds he was out well he wasn't out he tapped out but yeah I was uh I was hoping that Woodley would would take that and that would be the the start for him uh, of moving back through the division. As far as he goes now, I don't know what they're going to do with him. Um, he's a very expensive fighter, and from what I've seen recently, the UFC has been cutting a lot of a lot of people from the from their uh, their roster that are really expensive. Recently, JDS, uh, the Ream, uh, Alistair Overeem, they cut. I think last month. Um, but yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with him or, or what the future holds for, for Woodley. Uh, I'd like to see him just take some time off before he makes any rash decisions about whether or not what he wants to do next. But yeah, it's it's a big question mark on what's going to happen with Woodley. I hope he stays with the UFC. Um, I, I Somehow I just want to see him turn it around. I'm a big fan of his. Um, he's, he's trained with our gym for a long time. So yeah, hopefully he can turn that around. Jordan, what's going on, brother? Come on in. What's going on? Sorry for being so late. No, it's all good, dude. We're oh we're just recap we're we're recapping. Uh I was just talking about uh Tyron and uh and the Luke fight on the co main. Why don't you pull up the mic? Oh. And then Brandon, so do you first. want to adjust this camera over here? Yeah, sure. All right. Thanks, man. By the way, Jordan, this is my little brother Randon. He is the uh the producer for our show. Meet you. He was also hopping on the mic for a little bit nice. to uh to fill in for a little bit. But uh <laughs> you know surprisingly i've i i don't do a lot of solo sports stuff when i was in radio yeah. so being able to do this i was extremely nervous where i was like okay we're gonna talk about this this and this and i kind of just went over an outline with him quick and i was like fuck yeah. it we can fill some time while while jordan gets here oh i'm so sorry are we live right now yeah we're live oh, we're shit. live yeah <laughs> pull up to the mic man um yeah no, i'm sorry man I, last minute customer dude's like like i was like hey we gotta go blah blah and he's like treating it like it's a restaurant like he came in and he's like yeah well you know we got here on time it's like no dude you got here 10 minutes before close motherfucker and you asked <laughs> for a huge order and then you didn't get it done so i told him he had to leave and come back tomorrow he's like yeah well blah 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 you know i could shoot you right blah 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 out of nowhere and i was just like i guess and i'm like where the fuck are you working these days where people are talking about fucking capping your ass? Midtown, middle Milwaukee. I've been there for like four years. Jesus. And I'm like, I told him, I'm, I'm just thinking in my head, like, I'm cutting weight. I don't feel like dealing with this shit. I'm like, <laughs> I should, uh, 
it's like whatever i can't buy a gun man i will i will fucking let that loose dude you know it's it's been an interesting week as far as everything goes in general um there was so i'm part of a facebook group from being in the service industry where it's yeah. the, it's bartenders of milwaukee and so on and so forth and it's this week i saw someone who walked down on like a hundred and something tab over at Stenny's. Really? And Ryan Stenny put up a post where he was like, hey, this is the name of the girl. She walked out on a tab. The waitress tried stopping her. So his policy is this. Customer walks out. Yeah. Don't go outside with them. You know, so on and so forth. Don't chase them down. Your personal health or your well-being isn't worth whatever the tab was. You know, yeah. we, we can take the loss over you getting hurt. A, against their better judgment, this waitress followed her out there. What does this couple do? They kicked the fucking waitress. Kicked her. And we're like, we're not paying this tab, all this other shit. And they fuck off. So Ryan makes a post and he goes, hey, he goes, this is the person. This is what they did. They ordered a bunch of Don Julio and, and, and tequila and shit like yeah. that. They walked out on a hundred and forty some dollar tab. This is her. Facebook shames her. Post is up for about 20 minutes. This chick comes in and is like, please take this down. Here's the money for the tab. Closes it out. Good on her, but at the same time. You're still a piece of shit for trying to walk out on a fucking tab yeah, and being sure. a and being a shit person in general. And who the fuck kicks someone in the fucking service industry? Next, uh, what was the other one? There was another post of a woman who thought that she was overcharged in a West Dallas bar. Goes behind the bar, beats up the female bartender, hits her like ten times, and then there's two guys there. There don't even they're just playing pool with this chick. Don't no. say anything. Don't stop anything. Um, the last one, last night at Brothers. Um, Father son duo is in there oh, yeah, with with, with a group of people. I st I told Randon about this off air off air. So the managers come up to me and they're like, "Hey, there's this father son, or this there's this guy. He's outside. He's on the patio. We threw him out last time he was here. He shoved some of our staff. He was talking shit, so on and so forth. We just want him out of here. But he's a bigger guy. I was like, "All right, dude. I was like, well, how big can this guy be? I'm like, I'm two twenty. I looked at him. I was like. Oh, this is a big motherfucker. He's like 6'3", <laughs> 260 and shredded. I was like, oh, I was like, I can pick this guy up. <laughs> I was like, I was like, and I, I grabbed one of my friends. I was like, I grabbed one of my other teammates. And I was like, hey, I was like, can you give me a hand with this? I was like, this might get ugly. And it's so it's all the bouncers and this guy's table. And I'm taking a look around. I was like, he's like with seven or eight people. I'm like, let's just try and talk him out of here. I was like, I don't want a scene for this at all. Yeah. And so we go up to him. We're like, hey, dude, you were here last time. You caused a problem. You shoved some staff, so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, you need to leave. This dude is like, oh, I'm not leaving. No, no, you are. You're not going to get served anymore. You're not welcome here. More importantly, we don't want you here. Get yeah. the fuck out. And this guy tries arguing reason where he's like, well, I want to see footage. Well, here's the thing, man. If we're going to pull up the footage, we're going to grab a cop. And then at that point, we're going to file assault charges because you assaulted one of our staff on the way out the door. Okay. Now, you can leave or you can have charges pressed against you. It's your choice. This dude continued to argue. And we're like, listen, dude, let's go up to the front door. Let's get you out, so on and so forth. So we get him out. We get him towards the door. And this dude's he's talking shit to everyone. He's like, oh, you're fucking soft. You're this, you're that, all this other shit. All the stuff you shouldn't be doing if you're not the person that's like, hey, I, that's not me. You have the wrong person, so on and so forth, which his argument was. Yeah. And so he gets out the door, throws a glass on the way out, and his dad is there with him. And his dad's like, this is this is ridiculous. We're here with like seven or eight people. I think he said a higher number. I was like, no, you're here with like six or seven, eight people, whatever. And I was like, hey, man, I go, what do you do for a living? Well, I, I do a multiple of things. I go, so you're a contractor. I go, do you like doing work with assholes? And he goes, <laughs> He goes, well, I do a lot of work with people I don't like to do. I go, well, here's the thing, man. I go, I deal with thousands of people every week. I go, your son's a big enough jackass that we don't want anything to do with him. We don't want his business. We don't want any of his friends' business. And we don't want any of your business. Do us a favor. Tell all your friends. Because we don't want any of your friends' fucking business either. I go, do you understand? That's how big of a prick your son is. And the fact that he threw a tantrum on the way out the door yeah. reflects everything excellent of you on a father and he's like all right man he's like well what's your name i was like my name my name's d he goes d what i was like d's nuts get the <laughs> fuck out 
<laughs> and he just oh, you like looked at his beer. <laughs> he wanted to finish it. He just put it on the fucking railing and just walked out. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. Oh, and as soon God. as they got out, it's like as soon as they got outside, they're talking even more shit. And we're just like, yeah. dude, have a good night. Fuck off. Don't, get the fuck out of here. My point being to all this is that somehow people have gotten extremely shitty over a period of time. And it's yeah. fucking annoying. This whole idea of timeout culture versus you and there's a there's kind of an age gap between us. But at one point you were bouncing as well. When I was in college and you caused a problem in the bar, we dragged you outside and we kicked the shit out of you and we humbled yeah. the fuck out of you. And when you came back, you're like, oh, man, I don't want to fuck up again because there are negative consequences to my fucking actions. Yeah. And more and more, I see people just being like, I'm not fucking leaving. And it's one of those, it's one of those back and forths where, as much as you just want to drag someone out, it's cancel culture. It's uh, it's someone who wants to sue you, who wants to take away your livelihood, even though yeah. they're completely in the fucking wrong. And it's fucking annoying. And it's just one of those. That I'm like, I kind of want to be like, look, dude. I'm like, I'm not even fucking working right now. I'm like, I'm not even under contract. I'm a fucking DJ here. You guys yeah. want to go scrap? How much money do you have? I'll meet you in the fucking alley and I'll smack the fuck out of you. I fucking dude. Yeah. I'm just tired of it. I'm absolutely tired of it. Or my personal favorite from this weekend. You'll love this one. So I'm working the door at Taylor's. Woman comes up and I go, hey, guys. I go, IDs. Miss, I need you to put your mask on. I have a medical condition. Cool. And she's like, cool what? I was like, you're not coming in. And she's like, well, I can't wear a mask because of a medical condition. And I go, miss, I go, I want you to understand something. I'm going to be very clear about this. <laughs> you don't get fined. We, as the venue, get fined. And I go, and it's not a small one. I go, it starts at like five grand, goes up to 25K. I go, so if you can't that's wear it. Money. Exactly. That, that's enough to end that venue, especially after a year of not having income, yeah. not doing the type of numbers that you're used to doing. And I go, look, I go, if you have a medical condition, why the fuck are you here? And she's just like, well, I'm, I'm out with my girlfriend. I go, no, no, no. You don't understand what I'm saying to you. You have a medical condition where you can't wear a mask. You obviously have a compromised immune system or you're having an issue with breathing, asthma, wherever the fuck it is. Yeah. The last place you should be is in a fucking germ factory when there's a fucking pandemic going on. Yeah. And it was just one of those where <laughs> I'm the asshole for pointing out the fucking obvious to her. Yeah, that's it's ridiculous. Did you ever have anything like that when you were bouncing back in the day? Uh, Oh, you got an hour ring too? Aura? Yeah, actually, here. We'll, we'll transition the... to this. Sorry about that. I just saw it, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm sitting there playing with mine. And I'm like, oh, he has one, too. <laughs> so my birthday is actually on Tuesday. Callie got this for me. Nice. And uh, so I'll tell this story. So she comes over last night because she was going to hang out for UFC 260. I, ho I host those over at Brothers. So she gets here. We're hanging out. And I'm in here. I'm, I'm, I'm working on some music for, for next week. And I hear her go, hey, I think your dog peed on the rug again. And I went, God damn it. I was like, we were just outside like two minutes ago because I had just taken my dog out right before um, right before she had gotten here. And so like, I come storming into the bathroom. I'm like, God damn it. I was like, this dog keeps peeing on, on this rug. It's pissing me <laughs> off. And she's on one knee with the box. And I was like, what are you doing? And she's like, <laughs> she's like, happy birthday. And oh. I was like, I was like. You're not proposing, are you? <laughs> I got scared as fuck. I was like, I was like, wait. I was like, are we? At, did, did I miss a part of our relationship where this girl's proposing? Were you tearing up? No. <laughs> I think my heart stopped for a minute there. I was like, I had a flashback of my entire bachelorhood just fucking disappearing. But uh, no, so I, I got to open it up and I realized what it is, and I was like, holy shit. So there aren't many things that I don't buy myself. Usually, I see something, and I'm I'm pretty impulsive, and I bought and I I buy it. Yeah. For whatever reason, I was slacking on buying this, and she remembered it from like months ago, and was like, "I know what to cool. get you." And we we're we we're hanging out the other night, and she's like, "What's?" Because we were talking about my birthday, and she goes, "Well, what's your ring size?" I was like, "Give me a ring." I'm like, I'm "Like what? My fucking Liberace?" I'm like, "I don't fucking wear jewelry." <laughs> I'm like, "I wear a watch, and I wear like." Like friendship bracelets and shit yeah. like that. That's about the extent of my fucking jewelry you these days. You wake up in the middle of the night and she's measuring your fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what she did was, is she goes, she goes, I know what my my hand size is. She's like, her finger was like a seven and a half. Okay. And so she 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 compared it to mine. She's like, oh, yours is just a little bit bigger than mine. So so you're probably like an eight. So the eight like 
it barely got past the knuckle and then it left that where the um uh the the sensors are yeah it was leaving an imprint in my finger so Mm -hmm. i was like you know what i was like let's go up a size and she emailed them last night pretty quickly uh after we got home from the fights and they shot an email right back to her and they're like yeah send it back we can go up a size so on and so forth and then she's in the process of moving so they're just going to send it here so it worked out really well how do you like yours though I like it, dude. I like it a lot. Um, I just started the UFC sent it out to me. I guess it's supposed to help with like sleep and like help you. There's like a meditation thing on there where you can like follow it. And yeah, I'm, I wear a nine, so yeah, we're like we're the same size. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm doing a. I think it's yeah, eight. So I got a nine for my ring finger that I got to get. So, actually, nice. here, let me see yours really quick. Yeah, let me see if this fits on mine. Ooh, I so I was a little light the other day uh-huh. like, as far as my weight, and I swear to God, I could like slip it on and off, and then I ate a bunch of food and. It's like you my do, finger eating fat. fatty. I'm joking. Oh, actually, you know what? That's the nine. That's perfect. Yep. Callie, yeah, if you're watching, good that. call. We'll, we'll do the nine. Yeah, that, that she, has put a, a, she put a ring on it. She put a ring on it. <laughs> She's trying to keep it. She's trying to keep it for life. Uh, I don't blame her, man. We have a blast. Um, yeah, I put, see, this is my ring finger, too. So I put it on this one. I said, I figure I'll, when I switch it over when it's that time, when someone gets on their knee and asks me out. Ask me to be their husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just switch it. <laughs> I told her, I was like, you got to get your UFC contract. I'm like, I'm having there fucking dreams of being a fucking stay-at-home husband. Stay-at-home sugar daddy. Yeah. Sugar mom. Sh- yeah. Sh- whatever, dude. <laughs> whatever it is. I'm like, I want to stay at home and play records all day. I was like, you go out and fucking. I'm like, I worked my ass off for the last 20-some years. But yeah, we've we've joked around about that. But yeah, she's uh, she's great. Like we, uh, you know, it's, it's funny. She's like, she's, I don't know. We were really good friends before we ever started dating. Yeah. So it's been one of those where when we started hanging out again, we just kind of picked up our friendship. And then there was enough time between where she was engaged to Omar. And I thought there was enough time between the two of them being engaged. And I think it was like seven or eight years. It wasn't weird. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't weird. And and it was just one of those that we just get along really well. And especially when we were hanging out during COVID, we both had to go into quarantine at the same time. Yeah. And it's. I don't know if it if it's the same way for you. It's really great to have someone that you can talk to about mm-hmm. fighting. Where it was like the the weekend that we were in lockdown together, it was Sergio's debut in Bellator, oh, nice. and then shit. I think you were fighting on the UFC card the next day, or, or someone was. One of the two. Yeah, and there was a there's like two people that it was like maybe you and someone else that was fighting on the UFC card and then Sergio was fighting on the Bellator card. Nice. And I was like and it was just one of those that like we both had stories of like friends and experiences and so on and so forth that we could be able to just hang back and chill and then talk about things or even talk about technique and shit like that. And I was like, This is kinda cool. And I remember talking to my roommate at the time, I was like I was like, dude, I was like, Do you know how cool it is to like talk to someone that has about like the same interests as you? It's the same as like, uh, yeah. yeah, if it was a, a DJ as well for me, that I'd been like, dude, this is so cool. I can talk music with her, so on and so forth. I can talk <laughs> fighting. But yeah, we talk everything, man. That's tight. Yeah. That's tight. So tell me a little bit about your fight that you got coming up. Uh, was it Luis Saldana? So he got signed on season four and I, I got signed on season two. So um, he's explosive, likes to switch his stance up, likes to throw a lot of teep kicks and um, I don't know. Something's been off like the last like four fights. You know, I, I'm one in three in the UFC, and something's been off. So I was just this camp. I really tried to change it up, and uh, I started sparring more. Like Duke was like, "Hey, you should just spar all the time." Do me a favor, pull up to the mic a little bit. Oh. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Hey, there he, you go. Now you're coming in you way go. better. He, he was like, "You should just spar all the time." So I was like, "Okay." So I've been sparring like almost every day. I feel more energetic. My weight's lower and it's not as hard for me to like maintain it or, you know, cause before I'd be like, Oh, I got to do all this stuff just to keep my weight down. And, uh, yeah, I feel good about it. So it's just going to be pressure, 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 uh, stand up, do whatever it, it takes to get the W. I don't care if I knock them out or if I go in there and I submit them or anything like that. So you're a fucking killer on the ground, bro. Oh, like you've nice. had, dude, you've had some like slick fucking, uh, some slick submissions. I remember you hit a, I forgot what the what um not not the UFC it was outside the UFC before you had joined you hit someone with a calf slicer that you had rolled into him yeah and I yeah. was just like <laughs> so the setup for that so was that up here yeah Randy you want to check the door I don't think I locked the door do you got groupies trying to sneak <laughs> in here bro I, no no I hope not <laughs> shit dude no I uh. 
no, so what it was, he was going for a calf slicer on me, and I defended it, and as he was reaching for my legs to continue with the calf slicer, I grabbed his arm, and I got him into armbar. That's actually Derek Meaner. Derek Meaner won, uh, I think he won like a like a 20-second guillotine uh, some like maybe a month or two ago. So, yeah, the plan, I, I need to go out there and finish this, and I want to go back and get Derek again on TV. Oh, so, so you just got signed too? Yeah, he got signed too. He actually got signed, and um, he was like trying to fight me, so we got scheduled to fight, and that's the dude that actually wasn't able to fight because he got sick or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. But he was on there. He was. He's just so confident that uh, he he keeps he talks as if like um, he talks as if like like I shouldn't have won the fight, and it's just like I could see it'd be different if if he lost by decision. Mm -hmm. You know, then it's like, oh, okay, whatever. But no, homie, I grabbed your arm and I torqued it till you till you tapped. Yeah. So it's just like it's you know you gave up. It is whatever. I'm happy we're both in the UFC. Uh, I got my next fight coming up. I'm worried about Luis after mm -hmm. Luis, and I handle all that. Then it's gonna be okay. What's going on? You know, what's next? So does the uh, does the trash talk ever bother you when people oh. talk trash? Do you take it personally? Oh no, no, not I. I probably should, but I don't like. That's what people don't understand. I was one in three when I started, and I would go to people's hometowns because I was like, uh, because it well, it was hard for me to find fights because nobody wanted to fight a guy that was one in three. Mm -hmm. Then when I won all, the couple fights I did win, uh, some of the guys who had better records they saw it and they were pretty pretty raunchy fights, and they were like, no, we're not. It's not worth it. And so I was like, fine. I took all these hometown fights against the hometown hero. Mm -hmm. I had to go out there and murder this dude in front of his family, get paid, <laughs> and I'd smile at people. Boo, boo, fuck you. Oh, and I do it, and I would be like, oh, cool. I'll grab my check. I would leave, and it would be on to the next. Duke, hey, can I go fight here? Duke would send me a thumbs up text, and then I'd be like, cool. I'll see you guys. And I'd be like, <laughs> Yeah, and like <laughs> I just flew under the radar for like, dude. It was a couple of years. Like, I feel like people were like, "Oh shit, when did Jordan get all those fights?" And this is like, well, I just been, I've been doing it. So. Dude, I I've been hold, I've been sitting on this one. Number one, I told you I was gonna roast you for being late. You are <laughs> of the where are we at episode nine? nine. We're at episode nine now. You're the first guest to ever be late. Oh man. So I'm gonna pull this up. This is from <laughs> September 2013. And I believe you were still new to the gym. Oh, man. And you came over for <laughs> <laughs> So oh, this was, I, I want to say this was Callie's first professional fight. And you were on the same card. And you were hanging out with us. <laughs> and you were like, Parker, can I get a glass? And I was like, Jordan, how long have you been at the gym? You're like, and you said some number. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I was like, you're drinking from a cat. <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, all right, I'm going to oh pour you a drink, God. but you got to drink it from this cat the entire night. So I just completely <laughs> fucking roasted you. We got we got fucked up. We were up to like five. Like we were up really late. Dude. I remember that night. We Dude, I'm glad late. one of us did. <laughs> <laughs> we were up late as fuck. I was like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I got this photo from somewhere. <laughs> Cat, like Callie and I have gone through a bunch of photos of like, oh, my God, dude, this night. Shit, dude. I'm going to pull some of these up. Dude, this was. I don't even remember what this guy's name was, but this dude was. <laughs> <laughs> what the? What a video. You got a video of it. Dude, I put a sombrero on his head and he's got, dude, he's got the bottle of tequila. Or no, what is that? It's like, you can't, you can't even pretend like this is real. Dude, this dude <laughs> was gone. out on his feet, bro. Do you have the, you have this? Is this on your Facebook? This no, like this was, babe. this is in like the photo album. Oh, dude, oh here he is again. <laughs> Dude, I think he has a strong bow. I don't think that was like a bottle of something. I, I know he was training at our gym. I just don't remember what his name was. Yeah, me either. Dude, that's, oh, there you go. Dude, look at all that kettle one I used to drink back in the day, bro. <laughs> dude. Wow, that's was, an awesome pick. Oh, my God. Scott's there. <laughs> dude, Joffy was partying with us till like 5 in the morning, bro. Yep. <laughs> dude, who's that guy right there? Oh, <laughs> that's some bro change. <laughs> Oh. oh my god what else is that in is here funny we got a couple of these oh dan gonzalez yeah what's up we're repping the oc that's that's our gang sign for the oc right the there OC. <laughs> i can't believe i had that mohawk for so long <laughs> jeez whoa uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> man you were about to 
She's going to come over here and get you. <laughs> so I'll explain that. I was I was telling Rand before you got here, I was telling Randon about all these stories and so on and so forth. And I had said I was dating this girl, Amanda, at the time. Oh, okay. And I was like, hey, she, she was living in Chicago. And we're going back and forth. We're kind of doing the long distance relationship. I'd go on to Chicago. I would DJ and I would stay at her place. And then she would come up here and just like hang out and see her family. And we would go out, so on and so forth. That weekend, <clears throat> I planned for us to go see a concert. We went to go see Citizen Cope on a Friday. And then Saturday, I was like, hey, I was like, I have a bunch of friends that are fighting on this card. My best friend is fighting on as well. And I think it was Callie's like pro debut. Nice. And so I was like, Hey, we're going to go and support my friend, so on and so forth. We're probably going to party all night, whatever. And she's like, all right, sounds great. And she's like, she was always down for whatever. I remember at one point she like looked over at me and like, we're all hanging out afterwards. And she's like, are you sleeping with her? And I was like, no. I was like, it's my best friend. I was like, she's engaged to one of my friends. I was like, we all just hang out. And she's yeah. like, she's into you. And I was like, no, she's not. I was like, fucking stop. Sure shit. Eight years later. Callie and I started dating. <laughs> nice, nice. But yeah, she came with me and she was just like, she was just not having it. And I think she ended up going to bed early that night and she was just like, oh, you guys have fun. I'm just going to go yeah, to bed. Just be a party pooper. Yeah, and just like, <laughs> I'm out. I'm going to go crash the fuck out. Oh my but God. yeah. Um, fuck, I can't believe I still have that photo in there. I can't <laughs> believe that. I got to go through and just edit all those in, in general. And there's a lot of shit from... You know, over the last 10 years of shit that's been on that you take yeah. with your iPhone mm-hmm. and you go through it and you're like, holy shit, I forgot all about this. And it's funny. It takes you back to the exact moment you were at. And especially yeah. the one where I was like, I saw you drinking with the cat. I was like, oh. I remember that. I was like, I was giving them shit for whatever fucking you were new yeah. to the gym. And for whatever reason, yeah. I was just breaking your balls. You should see the stuff I see in people's phones, man, because I work at T-Mobile. Uh huh. Like, I just I've seen some shit on people's phones that I'm just like, <laughs> like, I'll look around like like. You're the customer, and we're, uh-huh. like, looking at the phone, and I'm like, yeah, this is this. And then, like, you know, then some shit will, like, pop up, and I'm just looking at I'm like, uh... And I just keep going, <laughs> like, as if I didn't see it. So we have this old dude that always comes in, and we give all the... Oh, no, go ahead. We give all the new guys, this old guy, when he comes in, uh, because he watches a lot of porn. So uh, he, every time he comes in, he calls them his stories... And he goes, yeah, you know, this is how he talks. Yeah, you know, uh, my stories ain't working. And uh, we're like, okay. And so the first time when I worked there, the first time, you know, three or four years ago, uh, they gave me his phone. I was like, damn, man, there's a lot of shit on here. As I'm wiping all of the stuff off of his phone, because I guess he's a mechanic, so I thought, like, whatever, it's just dirt or whatever. I'm like, man, this shit's really thick. And I'm, like, wiping. I cleaned his whole phone down. They're laughing. Like, everyone's just laughing at me. So he walks out. And because when I opened his phone and I look at it, it's all porn. It's all Pornhub. So I'm like, oh, these are his stories. And I told him, I was like, dude, you watch so much porn that your phone's just like, just took a shit. And I was like, we got to sell you a new phone. So I sold him a new phone. (laughs) I sold him a new phone. This dude, I've been there for almost four years. This dude has upgraded. Okay, he's upgraded three times. But this dude has gone from website porn, cool, regular porn that's on a website that you look up to now he's on the Pornhub app. I didn't even know they had an app. I didn't know either. I thought I watched a lot of porn. I didn't even know they existed. <laughs> God damn. This old dude got an app and he was like, yeah, my stories ain't working again. And so I gave the new guy <laughs> I said, I'm not touching his fucking phone, dude. I am not touching his phone. And uh, the new guy's over there. And I mean, so he's gotten two new guys since I've been there. And every single time after the new guys are done talking to him, it's just funny to watch their face when they open his phone up and see all the porn. (laughs) Dude, this isn't like, this isn't a casual amount of porn. This is a plethora of porn that you have on your phone player. You have to take a look at your life and be like, if you've had to upgrade your phone, (laughs) upgrade your phone four times in three years because you have so much fucking porn on it. Dude, you got to go talk to somebody, bro. You got to fucking ease the fuck back. Maybe go to a strip club. I don't know. Something. Which reminds me, (laughs) one of our soon-to-be sponsors, Silk Exotic. Ooh. Come to Silk. No, I'm joking. They're not one of my sponsors. (laughs) (laughs) No, I've joked around. I've told Faro, I was like, he has to come in here and he he has to do the podcast. I told Because him and I have so many fucked up stories (laughs) where I was so on Facebook, they have the memories that come up, so on and so forth. 
And I had broken my ribs like eight years ago. Yeah. And I told Ferrara, I was like, we were supposed to go out that night. And I was like, yo, dude, I was like, I fucked up my ribs. Like, I'm having problems breathing. Like, I'm fucking hurt, bro. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you fucking pussy. You broke your fucking ribs. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, <laughs> and like, I took it as a challenge. I was like, fuck you, dude. I was like, I'm going to down a fucking vodka and soda and I'll fucking Uber out to wherever the fuck you are. We got blackout drunk. We got blackout drunk at Mikey's and we ended up after barring there. And for whatever reason, we were out in the alley. I don't remember how I got to ask him how the fuck if he even remembers. For whatever fucking reason, we ended up out in the alley and we were peeing behind the dumpsters out behind Mikey's. And then he does the whole like, I'm going to pee on you thing. And I try doing Uh. it back to him. So we're in the alley, just two <laughs> drunk, dumb motherfuckers trying to pee on each other. <laughs> <laughs> and so I get done, and he leg or no, he gets done, and he leg kicks me, and I was like, "Fuck you!" So I leg kick him back, dude. We're out in the alley beating the shit out of each other. I have broken ribs, and I come back in. We're all fucking beat it up. We got fucking piss all over us, and like I forgot who the manager was at the time. And they looked at us, and they're like, what "The fuck's wrong with you two? And I was like. He started it, and they're like, dude, you guys got to go. <laughs> like, it was the look of, the fuck, get the fuck out. What, what the hell's wrong with you two? I got to tell you about a time when you bought me a dance. Oh, shit, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I was there with my DM, uh, the district manager of T-Mobile, mm-hmm. and literally he was like, he was in town, and I was like, <clears> what's up? Or no, he had heard that I wanted a job like uh, job reference, and he called me, hey, Jordan, are you leaving T-Mobile, blah, blah? It was like, and I was like, no, I just want job reference. You know, I'm always looking for a new job. Well, I showed up at his hotel, and because he thought I was joking when I said, let's go out for a drink, let's go party, because he was already drunk when he had called me. Mm-hmm. And I so I show up literally 20 minutes later. He's like, holy fuck, you're outside right now? I said, yeah, <laughs> let's go. And so we go, and we go to, you know, go over by you, and you get me a dance. And I just remember uh, one of the other bouncers was like, hey, don't get a dance from this girl. She's like, no, she's trouble, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I look over, and the DM's, like, he's getting a fucking dance from that chick. Like, I just told him, like, don't get a dance from that chick. Like, she's trouble. Like, they all warned me she's trouble. Don't get a dance from that chick. So as I'm getting my dance, I look over, and he's just finishing up getting his dance. And I'm like, oh, my God. And so I was like, hey, man, let's get out of here. <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. As I'm talking to him, so me and you are talking, the girl's right here. She's like, or I could just blow you both for money. And I literally, I'm drunk as fuck, and I look over, and I'm like, we should get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. Like, this is trouble. So we got out of there. We went to the casino. This dude's crazy. And uh, we go to the casino. Jordan, pull up to the mic, bro. Oh, he, yeah. pulls, he pulls out $700 or $800. He gambles. You know, he's We're sitting there playing blackjack. I love blackjack. He likes yeah. blackjack. Uh, he makes about $4,000 making these outrageous like blackjack hands. Like $4,000. And this is within maybe... You know, I'm going to say a couple minutes. Like, he's just boom, 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 four grand. And I'm like, cool, dude. Let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go get some pancakes and let's call it a night. Yeah. He goes, no, man, I'm not leaving until I, I win $10,000. $10,000. I said, sounds good. Two minutes later, it's all fucking gone. And he's like, Griffin, I should have listened to you. <laughs> and that's, I'm just, that's always the case, bro. You know George, right? Uh, he was the floor host over at Silk, or the, the head of security over at Silk for yep, a long time. Yeah. So what George would do is he would come out on Sundays and he would just get lights out. And it'd always be like, he'd kind of be doing that Water Street wobble where it was like, Parker, let's go to Potawatomi. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, my gambling days are done. I'm like, I usually play poker. And I'm like, I never fucking play poker drunk. And I've gone there a couple times with him and he'll pull out like a couple hundred bucks out of the ATM. And then he starts playing roulette and he starts just making these. I love roulette. He just starts making (laughs) fucked up bets. (laughs) And then all of a sudden he's up like six or seven grand off a couple hundred bucks. And I'm like, cool, let's go, man. He's like, no, I can the exact same scenario where it's like, no, man, I I can, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going. (laughs) I'm going to be rich. Yeah. And like, there's a point where like, there's a point that you hit in casino where someone comes up to you and they're like, they're trying to slow you down because you're winning that much money quick, that much money that quickly. But they're like, Hey, we're going to comp you a room. We're going to copy a meal. Let's copy some drinks, so on and so forth. And I'm like, hey, dude, I go, take the fucking hint. They want you to stop. So fucking stop. 
take the free room. Let's take a bottle of Grey Goose. We'll call up some friends. We'll throw a fucking rager in your hotel room. And he's like, yeah. I'm not done yet. And I'm like, dude, come on. You're up yeah. a couple of grand at this point. And then I was like, all right, dude, I, I can't watch you fucking crash and burn. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to take a Uber, Lyft, whatever the fuck ever. I'm going to go back to my house. And I'll go back to my house. And I'll see him on Monday. I was like, hey, dude, how'd everything go? He's like, man, I was up 12 grand at one point. I was like, dude. Did you cash out? He's like, nah, man. Gave it all back. And I was like, the fuck is wrong with you, bro? How? 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 I'm going to fill you in on a little secret because I got gambling problems. <laughs> <laughs> if you show up with, uh, let's just say, 20 bucks and you're up like 500, in my gambling mind, because I have a problem, I never lost five or $480. The money just didn't exist. I only showed up with twenty dollars. So if I make five hundred, then I lose all of it. Then I'm like, damn, I lost twenty dollars that night. Not, I didn't lose five hundred. I lost twenty bucks. I see your philosophy <laughs> on it, but it's also like for me, it's one of those that I've I played some pretty high stake poker when I was when I was going back and forth from Vegas. Like, yeah, my routine was for whatever reason I liked playing at the Palms. And I would get to wherever I was staying at, like wherever hotel they were putting me up in for that weekend. And I would literally drop my bags off and I'd be like, hey, can someone run me over to the Palms? And they'd be like, you don't want to gamble here. I was like, no, I really like the poker room over there. And it's just, it's a small poker room, but it wasn't like sharky. Like you would go to yeah. the Bellagio. You would see like familiar faces of people like you saw that like On World Series of Poker. And, and I was shit. like, no, that's, that's cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Where I was like, nah, fuck that, dude. I was like, that's fucking Phil Helmuth over there. Helmuth. I was like, nope. I'm like, I'll go to some fucking shitty poker room. So what I would do is, is I would get there and I like, I'd, I'd essentially just have like all the tip money I made on Wednesday, yeah. uh, working at Silk, and it'd be like a couple hundred bucks, and I would just change it and I'd be like, yeah, I was like, oh, fucking work at a strip club, take all my singles, give me chips. Oh yeah. So it'd be like three, four hundred dollars. And I would sit there, and I wouldn't grind, but I would sit there for like 10 hours if I didn't have anything to do. And I would be like, where am I at? And I'd just like, at some point where I'd be like, I'm hungry, or like, it's 11 o'clock, I should probably go shower, go check into my room, get ready to go go out and go meet up with some friends and shit like that. Dude, I'd be up like three or four grand. And I'd be like, perfect. And I'd be like, all right, cash out, stack all my chips and turn them in. And that's how it was. And it was small enough. It was small enough because you would start out with like, I think it was like you could only the, the table max was two or three hundred bucks. So I'd sit there and I would just clean people out. And Hell I was yeah. just like, fuck, yeah. And it's it, it adds up over a period of time where it's like, you know, you're getting 80, 90 dollar rakes, you know, so every time you win. But, you know, you're playing 20 hands to get that basically. Yeah. Excuse me. But yeah, over a period of time, you just start shooting the shit with people. You start yeah. noticing small fucking things. And I was reading a bunch of body language books at the time. So like I'd be talking to people yeah. and I would keep dead eye contact with them. And I'd talk to them about like poker and shit like that. And I'd watch them fucking index. And that's where you look up and to the left. That's okay. where um, you're sourcing the creative part of your brain. And it's usually when people do that, it's They're because it's, yeah, so it's a tell. <laughs> Or I would see people do like the, they would be rubbing their neck. That's a sign mm. of stress. And I'd, I'd be like pushing people hard and I'd watch them do that. And I'm like, you ain't got shit. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to call your ass. You're bluffing. You're bluffing ass. You ain't got shit. Right. Or I, I'd be talking shit. I'd be like, yeah, I'm like, I got my favorite hands. I'm like, my favorite hand I'd always joke is like pocket eights. And mm. they're like, and like an eight would hit, but I have like pocket aces and people would be like, oh shit. I was like, I told you going in this, I got my fucking favorite hand. Then I, I'd show up and I'd be like, like you said you had eights. I was like, I had aces. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd end up hitting something stupid. That's like I end up hitting trips or something like that or hit a full house on, or some fucked dude, up you're shit gonna, like you're that. You're going to have to show me. I want to start doing games. I heard of their games at like, uh, like at some of the bars around Milwaukee. And I want, I really want to learn poker. I mean, I feel like I know, like I'm, I'm a beginner. Mm-hmm. So like you got to show me sometime like how to. Did how you ever meet my roommate Lee, uh, Lee Gook? He was a bartender. Sure. If I saw him, I probably know. Him. I'll, I'll show you All pictures right. of him after the podcast. What him and I did was way back in the day, we were playing. We were playing at Ferraro's house. Like we would do Sunday fun day over at his house, yeah. and he has a he had a really cool basement out in Menominee Falls, uh, out in Taylor's Woods. He had a poker table, like a professional poker table. I think he had a card shuffler and shit like that. <laughs> And we'd play cards out there, and I'd play with his old man. Uh, he'd have, dude, he'd have professionals over there, and then he'd have like huge games that he did for like thousands of dollars. Damn. Anyway, 
I played there a lot. And then Lee kind of taught me how to play poker. And then what him and I did a lot was when we had to open up the Juno Club in like the early 2000s, we did online. So at the time, there was a workaround that you could do where it was like you you couldn't use your credit card because if your credit card was based in the U.S., you couldn't put money onto the account. You had like you couldn't put money onto the account and you couldn't take money off the account. Yeah. So what you had to do was like kind of like a, a Visa gift card where you would yeah. load it. And you'd have to say the zip code was in like Russia or some shit. Okay. Um, so that zip code that was attached to it, you could then gamble with it. And then when you would win, you could load the money from that poker site onto that card. And then you would go to an ATM and you could pull the money out. Pull it out, yeah. So what Lee and I did was when we had, we'd have to be up there. I think our first, when we first opened that place, we had to be up there for like four months nonstop. And there's nothing to fucking do up there. We were the only fucking thing. We were the only business that was there that was worth going to outside of like the bowling alley and the restaurant that was in the small town. Um, but we were making hand over fist out there. So what we would do after we got done with work is we would just, we'd connect to the Wi-Fi and we'd start playing poker tournaments. That's tight. And that's how, and then like we would be watching, like I would download torrents of like video, not video, like we would do like videos of like how to get really good at poker. So we'd be watching this in the background and playing tournaments. Lee was a psycho. He'd be playing on four different tables at once. And I was like, I have, I'm like, I have no idea how the fuck you're doing this. Like I had to concentrate and play on one. And it was one of those that <clears throat> they taught you and they teach you this for when you're playing in like a, a real world game. And yeah. when you're playing online is that you watch what each person does. So okay. when the action goes to this person, you're watching what they do. You're watching, like, are they looking at their cards? Are they playing with their chips? What are they doing? Are they taking their time? Are they calling right away? And these are things that you figure out, like, the habits that this person has of if they're calling right away, what do they have? And you make okay. a mental note of, okay, so this person had, um, I don't know, 10-9 uh, suited, and they called okay. right away. And you just start seeing that. And you, it's hard to remember it. But the longer you play with someone, the easier it is to remember because you start seeing their habits more and more and more. Yeah. Um, and that's how I got good at it is that like I was just watching what wherever the action was going on the table. I was paying attention. I was always looking at the person ahead to see what they were doing. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a concentration thing. And for someone who's fucking ADD as fuck, like it was one of those. I was like, who are you telling? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, concentrate. Or it'd be like one of those. Like you see, a, you'd see a, like a waitress walk by and you're like, hmm. What was I doing? <laughs> What's my hand again? God yeah. damn it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I uh like when I got really into blackjack, kind of different, but I started kind of learning the poker hands through blackjack because the blackjack has the side games in their poker hand. Mm -hmm. So it's like blackjack on the main, but then you have the side bets that are poker hands. And uh Wait, do they do that at Potawatomi too? They I don't even know because they have digital now. Yeah, they do. They still do it. Okay. I don't trust those those fucking digital Dude, games at I. all. Fuck that, man. But uh, but I won like nine hundred dollars a couple months ago. I won like nine hundred dollars a couple months ago doing the side bets. Oh, really? On that, yeah, I was like, oh shit. And that was uh, down at uh, Rosemont, like betting on the fights. <laughs> oh shit, too. yeah, dude. But uh, I but, used to work down there, dude. I used to work in uh, Bridgeview. Uh, I worked at Scores in Chicago, and I'd oh, always, really? I I would always drive by that, and I never got the opportunity to stop there because I was always. Like I would, it's an hour for for me to drive there and an hour for me to drive back. So I would okay. usually get done at five in the morning. And the last thing I wanted to do was go, go to a gamble. fucking, go gamble. I was like, no, nah, I want to go home. I want to go let my dog out and shit yeah. like that. But no, dude, I love that whole area. I was down there. Um, Manny fought down there uh, at the Rosemont Arena. And it was me, Cassidy. Yep, we were there. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And we yeah. all went out afterwards, dude. <laughs> dude, I got lights out. Thank God I got a fucking hotel room there because I was just fucking smoked, bro. Man, that was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, I want to say it's three or four years ago because I was still working in Chicago at the time. So yep. I think the Silk downtown has been open for two years now. It was two years in May. Mm. It'll be three this upcoming May. So yeah, that had to be at least four year, four ago because I was still working in Chicago at the time. Nice. But yeah, dude, that whole area is really nice. They have that indoor, um, like free fall place. I forgot what it's called, but you can like the, the skydiving. Sky yes, the I indoor still, sky I want to do it so bad. You yeah, know what, dude? I'm good. down. After you get done with your fight, we should just take a road trip down there and we go should. do it. Randon, you down too? You want to go? Want to do some indoor skydiving? Hell yeah! All right, we're gonna I, do. I some would never skydive in person, like real life, but I'll jump in there. I'll try that. I was supposed to do it 
two or three years ago and I was literally doing the class for it and I was waiting like yeah. so um, it's like in Kenosha and you go down and you sign up and I actually the reason why I got a deal on it was because I made a bet with my friend Chicago Nick who was just up here you met him the last time when he was up here when you came okay. out for the fights um, he's the dude that does uh, the personal training down in Chicago okay hence the name Chicago Nick um, I made a bet he was that Mike Ill Will Mike Will, he's a 155er. He was fighting Charles Overa. Okay. And he was like, he's like, dude, he's like, Will's gonna gonna fucking kill Overa. I was like, fuck <laughs> that, dude. I was like, Overa's gonna take him. I was like, and it had something to do with the fact that I was just like, I was like, dude, I was like, that dude was a handful for Anthony. I was like, and I think Anthony could beat Mike Will like easily. I was like, so I was like, Olivera's gonna stomp him. And he was just like, oh, we'll see. So we made a fifty dollar bet on it. And I was nice. like, I think it was a give me like odds were pretty even and he was like he's like dude i'll make you a deal he's like i'll put 50 bucks towards your first skydiving thing and i was like all right cool so i won and he got me a gift certificate and i was like cool so i ended up going down there and i took the class and you literally just sit in a room for five minutes you watch a video and they're like yeah you're gonna be tandem jumping with someone else you're basically strapped to someone you jump out the plane with them and i was like all right i'm cool with this um at the time our grandfather was pretty sick and i think he had just went into the hospital and my mom had ended up calling me and she was just like he just passed away and i was like i'm not jumping off a plane today and i ended up like turning around going back yeah. home and shit like that and i was just like i ended up meeting up with my mom and, and talking to her for a bit and i was just like i was like yeah it's getting ready to go skydive and she was like oh i'm so sorry i was like no it's cool i was like we'll do it another time and so what they did was they gave me a slip and they're like hey when you want to come back bring the slip in We'll get you in. It's good for like two years. I was like, all right, cool. It must have flown out the window. It's just gone. It's just gone. I had no idea what happened. Somebody to else it. used it. Yeah, that's a <laughs> shit happens, dude. You ever uh, seen that skydiving porn? What? Yeah, it's like, like where they're. <laughs> I don't even know. You I, have my interest. I, I, Go I ahead. just, I, I kind of heard about it. I never heard about I it. I never it? looked it up oh. or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Open your browser, you lying son of a bitch. <laughs> so walk me through this. Is it one of those where they're tandem and he's just like fucking just banging? I guess, or I guess they're just doing it. And then like uh, like right when they're about to come, they're just, they just fucking throw themselves out of the plane. I don't know. <laughs> what in the fuck? Yeah. Like, listen, I'm not going to lie, dude. I've seen and been through some freaky shit in my short period on this earth. I have never thought, you know what would be really cool? I'm going to fuck on this plane, and I'm going to jump out of it. Never. <laughs> never, ever, ever crossed my mind. And at some point, you got to question yourself, what the fuck is wrong with me that I think this is a good idea? I Let alone, let some, dude, what the fuck are the safety issues for trying to film that shit, dude? Right. You're, you're jumping out of a plane, but wait, are they butt naked when they jump yes, out too? Yes, yes. Dude, it's like 30 degrees up there. There's got to be like shrinkage, and no, that is a hell no for me. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I got that. Listen, dude, I got that schmedium dick. I'm like, no, dude, <laughs> hell no. You put me in 30 degrees and fucking 5,000 like feet of altitude. Uh, uh-uh. uh, because it, it it can be 90 degrees on the ground. It's but it's cold up there. Exactly. Yeah, I could see that. My wavels will be like up in my throat. I'm like, hey, Jordan, <laughs> I'm jumping out of a plane. Uh-huh. It cold as fuck up here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude, did you watch the fights last night? I didn't, but I always, I dude, I. Yeah, I've been fighting for so long. Like, I, I didn't even realize I've been fighting since I was 18 and I'm 31. So, like, I've just been, I just got, after a while, I don't really watch the fights. I like to, like, if it's Anthony or somebody from the team's fighting, mm-hmm. I'll watch. But other than that, I'll watch, like, that fight and then I'll leave. Or, like, I showed up to the fight night. Yeah. And, and I was like, cool. Like, if you, your friend invites me out, I'll go out and I'll watch yeah. the fights. But other than that, I don't really watch fights. But I do like to watch, like, uh, Instagram, like, ESPN, uh, MMA and yeah. uh watch like the highlights and stuff so it was a uh, it was kind of a, you know without that that volkanovsky um ortega fight it, they took that fight off that yeah, was supposed uh, to be that fight volkanovsky volkanovsky got covid oh. there's a bunch of them got um there's a bunch of them that got canceled ronda marcos I know that. there so i always get really interested whenever there's 115ers on the card because i always watch it like Callie and I watch them pretty religiously whenever there's someone in her division fighting. Yeah. Uh, so Ronda Marcos was supposed to fight. Uh, Jessica Penne was supposed to fight. Um, Hannah Goldie was supposed to fight Penne, but Goldie tested positive for COVID. Marcos uh, was removed due to COVID. Um, and then 
William Knight was supposed to fight Menefield, and then Menefield, they just ended up giving Menefield a new uh, a new opponent last minute. But yeah, it was a pretty good card. Um, Woodley actually came out. I didn't see the that fight, but yeah, I saw the results. He came, oh, damn. He came out swinging, dude. And and to be honest, man, it was one of those. I had said going like Chicago Nick and I were talking about. It, and I said like, dude, he's got to come out fucking swinging for whatever reason. He wasn't getting started, and it just seemed like he was just taking a beating, especially in that Covington fight. I think yeah. he only got off like eighteen punches in five rounds. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I want to see him come out. I want to see him be explosive, and he was like, he came out swinging right away. Him and Luke went up against the fence, and uh, they were they were going back and forth for a little while, and then at one point. Woodley was just fucking swinging for the fences and he cracked Luke and it looked like it was going to start beginning, start to be the beginning of the end for Luke and Woodley fucking jumped on it. And then he got cracked with a right hand right behind the ear and his legs went stiff and he just backed up against the fence to try and get his, his wits about him. Luke saw it, smelled the blood in the water and went after him. And then eventually he just realized that Woodley wasn't going to go down. And somehow they ended up on the ground, and I think it was just one of those. Luke went for um, a darse choke, and I I'd said I was like, dude, I'm like, I think that's in already. And as soon as his arm got across and he got that back, and Woodley was no. up against the fence, so he didn't really have any room to really escape. And Luke just fucking he didn't choke him out, but Woodley ended up tapping. Um, it sucks because he's a you know he's someone that trained at the gym for fucking ever, and I want to see him do well. And I, want, I was hoping this is going to be the start for him to come back. Because I'm a big fan of his. He won me a lot of money when he fucking knocked out Lawler, dude. Plus, oh, he's yeah. a, dude, he's a good dude at the gym, dude. He's yeah. good energy. He, you know, he talks to everyone, he, you know, and he coaches through, like, pro practice. You know, he mm-hmm. talks with guys that are younger, and he's like, you know, this, you know you're doing this, do this instead. Yeah. Um, he's a lot like Manny in that sense. And I just want, I really wanted to see him to, to start making his comeback. But... I don't know, man. Uh, the UFC has been cutting a lot of fucking high payroll guys lately, so I'm hoping they keep them. But, dude, they cut JDS. They cut fucking Overeem yeah. and shit like that. And I get it, but it's just one of those that, you know, those are staples for me whenever those guys are fighting. Like, especially yeah. JDS, dude. I loved watching JDS. That war between him and Cain Velasquez was fucking amazing. Dude, it's hard getting in the UFC, and it's hard staying in the UFC. And that's why, like, I just remember, like, uh, the one fight my last – not this last fight, but the fight before that when, when the guy got pulled out. Or no, TJ, so I won. But even before that, uh, basically it was like, shit, this is my last fight. If I lose this fight, I'm gone. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, that's the only thing that kept going through my mind. And uh, I just, I'm just like, fuck. So the guy didn't make weight, I guess, the next fight after my my win. And basically they gave me a one-fight contract. And they basically, they're like, we're not going to resign you. So I was just like... You know, I'm sitting here like, fuck, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, then the guy didn't make weight. And then they're like, oh, yeah, we'll give you another four fights. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, cool. So I made weight and I was professional about it. And I'm like, dude, somebody's fucking looking out for me or something. Yeah. And uh, that's just been another motivation behind it is like, man, I got lucky. So I have three more fights left on my contract with the UFC. Um, unfortunately I lost that one against Yusuf and I, dude, the, another guy didn't make, or no, the, another, he didn't make weight or he couldn't fight. So Yusuf came in, uh, w- however, like a week later I had to cut weight twice back to back. So yeah, I, I remember I, that I cut over 40 pounds in two weeks. It's just like, I couldn't do it. And so my body, I felt good the first round and the second, third round I was, my body was just like, it gave up yeah. and I was just like, fuck. So, um, I just think from here on out, like moving forward, I, I feel pretty confident and very good about like how things are going to go, especially cause I got the weight cut down. Yeah. So what do you walk around at these days? Uh, I was walking around at 170, 175, mm-hmm. but I started like cutting down. So now I'm 160, 165 ish, but like mostly 160. And so. that's where you start your weight cut at when you, when you go into fight week. So or? this last fight, I was 170, like 171 and I started cutting down and mm-hmm. I've been walking around at 160 for the last couple, like month. Okay. So that's so my weight's like real low, but I feel good here. So I'm gonna stay here after this. I'm I we're getting older. I can't. I'm not 18 yeah. anymore. I can't get punched in the gut or punched in the face and then pop right back up. Now I'm like, fuck, dude, you hit me hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pop back up. Yeah, I'll be like, oh, I, you know, I'll get up and shake it off a little bit. Like, you know what? I'm gonna go stand over there for like one round. <laughs> you know, and then and then I'm like, cool. Let's let's keep going. So. Yeah. I, uh, you know, the, the couple of jujitsu tournaments I did, the first one I did 
I remember when I was cutting weight and I didn't know like where my weight was going to be. Um, shout out to Jen De Cristo. She was the one that she was like, you should do, you should do a jujitsu competition. Yeah. She's like, you're getting good. And I was like, mm. I didn't think I was there. I think I was like a one stripe white belt and some shit like that. I was like, ah, oh, dude, I haven't cut weight since fucking high school. I was like, all right, let's see how this goes. And I ended up, uh, I was 235 on uh, New Year's Day, and I ended up cutting to 185, I think, in four weeks. Damn. Um, But I was 30, I think, at the time. And big yeah. shout to a, a really longtime good friend of mine, Jorge Benefente. He's a, a black belt over at, at the time, I think he was like a purple belt. Um, he's a black belt over at Crossover. Okay. Uh, off of Mayfair Road. Um, oh, those, guy, over... those guys are cool. I know yeah. uh, Bobby, Bob Duffy. Yeah. Dude, B- Bob Duffy and I, we started at Adrian Serrano's together, and Justin Lemke was there yeah. at Adrian Serrano's. And uh, yeah, Bob Duffy, man, he'd be like, I'm going to give it to you as hard as you give it. <laughs> and I was young, and I was, you know, if somebody punches me back then, I'm like, oh, I'm going to kill you. So I tried to come at him, and he would just lay me out <laughs> every single time. <laughs> it's humbling, man. It is, man. But um, oh, going back to what I was saying, so I talked to Hori about it and he had done a bunch of tournaments already. He's like, dude, he's like, I got you. He's like, this is the routine you want to do. He's like, this is the diet you want. He goes, this is how you keep your strength up at, you know, as you're losing all this weight. And I was like, all right, cool. So I think the day of, I was 197. No, no, no I had to be lower than that. I think it was like, I think it was like 191 and I cut to 185 and it was pretty easy. Like, we sat in the hot tub and they just put that makeup remover shit on you. And then we sat in the hot tub. Abilene, with the tele- Abilene, yeah. Abilene, yeah. Yeah. And then I hopped out after like 45 minutes and he's like, jump on the scale. He's like, drop your, drop your shorts. I was like, all right, drop my shorts. I'm cupping my sack. And I'm like, I'm at 187. He's like, all right, puto. He's like, we're getting in the sauna. <laughs> so nice. we get in the sauna and I remember I was, I was getting kind of loopy and I had like, I had like Bluetooth headphones in. And they were starting to cut out because it was hot in there. And I should have thought, I should have known better. And I was like, I was like, Jorge, I was like, dude, do me a favor. I'm like, go put these in my locker. I'm like, they're overheating. I was like, take my phone. And I gave him the combination to my locker. And I was like, just throw it in there. And like, I, re- I realized after he had already walked out of the sauna, I gave it to him backwards. I was like, oh shit, dude. I was like, I didn't expect this to happen. So I go to open the door and it, it won't open. And I was like, what the fuck? And he's like, I'll let you out when you make weight, fucker. I was like, what? The ah. fuck? <laughs> and so I can hear Jorge, like I can hear like someone out there talking with Jorge. And I was like, Hor- I'm, I'm trying to explain to Jorge. I'm like, yo, dude, I'm like, I gave you the combination backwards. It's actually the other way around. And I can hear Jorge talking to someone out there. He goes, you hear that? He's still pounding on the fucking door. He's still alive. He's got weight to make. So he must have been talking to someone at Gold's. And they're yeah. like, you can't do that. He's like, he's still pounding on the door. He's alive, bitch. Don't worry about it. Don't fucking worry about it. Dude, Dude I tell that story still, and I fucking still laugh about it. I was like, son of a bitch. And I remember like the last pound I had to make was just rough. I remember my, my arms were like curling in because I was so oh dehydrated. My God. And then he was like, Dude, he's like, when you, he's like, you're going to get in the shower. He's like, you're going to want to drink the water. He's like, turn your back away from the shower head he's like just rinse off he's like we'll go throw you on the scale and he goes he goes i promise i'll give you like a coconut water whatever the fuck you want after you make weight i was like all right dude (laughs) yeah yeah, uh after that like it was a lot easier like i i pretty much just stayed at like 195 and then that week i would lose like four or five pounds and then like i just sweat out the last five pounds i was like i'm golden but yeah dude making weight fucking sucks yeah, it's, uh, you know what? I've been doing it for so long now that it's it's not as bad as it used to be. Like, I used to just dread it. I call it hell week. Mm-hmm. So, like, my hell week is coming up pretty soon, and, like, that's pretty much tomorrow, starting yeah. tomorrow. So, I've been sitting at, like, 160 this week. I'm going to be go from 160. I'm doing it a little bit different. I'm doing it how I used to do it, mm-hmm. which I would make weight, and I don't need to jump in a sauna or a steam room. I feel like I like I tried it doing it the way the UFC taught me with the water loading. Yeah, but I do it where I just won't eat eat anything, and I'll eat very little. So I'll go through like a calorie deficit, and then but I'll continue to drink water and keep drinking water. And a P, I love a Pedialyte popsicles. Mm-hmm. And then basically, um, so this week I'll be 160 tomorrow, 158, 159 tomorrow. And then on Saturday, I want to wake up at 151. 
and then I want to maintain between 151 and 155 from Saturday till about Tuesday when I leave. And then when I show up at the UFC over there, I'll probably, literally, I'll probably already be on weight. So, so what do you do for your bad. water load then? Are you doing like a gallon a day and then day of, or the day before doing like a half or what do you do? I, I was doing like two gallons for like a couple days, then one gallon and then dropping down to like the eight ounces, mm -hmm. which is, I mean, that's all right. But like, I don't, I don't even want to do that. Like I don't, I, I feel, um, how do you say, I feel good. But at the same time, I just, I'm just went back to the way I was winning. I, I went back. I wanted to go back to the way I was doing things when I was winning. Mm -hmm. If I was winning and I was miserable and I was angry and I wanted to fucking rip everybody's head off, then like that was helping me win when I'm hydrated and oh yeah, I'm so happy. I'm in the UFC and blah, blah, blah. That's cool. But guess what? I'm not fucking angry. I'm not in the fucking the headspace. I don't want to rip anybody's head off. I'm yeah. fully hydrated. I'm not. I'm thinking clear because I'm hydrated. No, I want to be delusional. I want to be almost like, dude, the, the, he's lost his mind. Like I'm in a desert and I'm like, uh, I need money. Like I want to <laughs> be like like that. And that's the Jordan. That's the native psycho. That's the psycho hammer. That's the person that um that won the money that yeah. did that got the job done and my mom says man you need to fight how you used to rip a guy's head off for two hundred dollars now you're out there and you can't even do that you get paid way well. i said oh shit <laughs> that's horrible <laughs> you're right you're right so well, do, you, do you feel there's a difference between you know when you're making two hundred dollars a fight and you're making you know 20 grand a fight is it is it a difference where it's the struggle's not there or, or is it just like you know what the struggle's there it's just different and and saying more the when people used to say yeah more money more problems that's so that's biggie real. that's right there dude that's that painting dude yeah <laughs> yeah that's dude that's that's the realest thing i've ever heard i never understood until i made a little bit more money and people oh yeah you got money oh you got money now you're this uh, no i don't uh, you got to pay taxes. You got to pay percentages to people. You got to do this. My baby mama, she thinks I'm fucking rich or whatever. So she gets me in court. No, no, it doesn't work that way. She sees my finances now. So oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, you know, so. Like I'm trying to get there. Give I'm, me, give me a minute. <laughs> yeah, give me a minute. I'm trying. So it's just, uh, you know, I just think that I was, uh, I worked so hard to get to the UFC and I worked so long to get there mm -hmm. that when I made it, I, oh, I'm not going to lie. I was like, Oh, like almost like a relief, like I made it, you know, but I let off the gas Yeah, and I was just like, you know, man, this was so hard. I went and fixed my body. My body's all busted up. Well, not it's, it's, it has its little here and there, you know, it's busted up, but I fixed most of it and I feel better now. And, um, yeah, I think it's just time to like literally step down and just be me out there, you know? Yeah. So my mom was right. I have not been myself when I'm out there. I'm I'm trying to be too careful. Oh, oh if I lose or, oh, if I do this, I'm going to do it wrong. No, I just need to go out there and punch a motherfucker in the face and rip his head off and, and smile about it and love it. Because I, I do, dude. I have a lot of fun when I hit people and when I fight. Mm -hmm. I have so much fun. Um, and I love it. I forget that I'm even making money. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's all, I just want to get back to that, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's tough, man. It's, you know people lose their motivations or like, I, I, I kind of get what you're saying. There's that sigh of relief. Um, I was just talking about this with Callie the other day. I was like, you know, there was a point where in my career, as far as a DJ went, that I was like, I was like, dude, I was like, I was playing with Kid Rock. I was working with Tommy Lee. I was playing with huge artists and shit like that. And it was great. Like I was, I was able to go to my family. I'm like, yeah, I've been doing this. I've been doing that. So on and so forth. Yeah. And everyone was real cool about it. Like everyone was just kind of like casual, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of my family members were like, yo dude, I saw that, that video of you and, and so on and so forth. Or I saw the photos of you. And, uh, it's tough, man. When, when you, when you have to take a step down, when you go from here to here and having to have those same conversations, it's, it's fucking weird. And yeah. it's hard too. It's, it's anxiety. It's, it's. It's one of those that, like, I remember I had said, I was like, I was anxious about seeing my family because I didn't want to answer the questions about, oh, why aren't you working with this person anymore? Why aren't you yeah. working with that person anymore? And it's tough, dude. You, you can't, I'm not lecturing you. No, what no. I am saying is, is from personal experience, what I should have been doing is I should have been working harder. I should yeah. have been, I should have been sitting in the studio doing even more work. Yeah. Working on even like, well, what can I do with this routine? 
Oh, what can I do with, you know, this kind of sounds like that. I should have been going through more music and, and working on enhancing what I was doing even more. And it's, it's crazy because I don't, I don't really think I'm that explosive of a DJ per se. Like I know I can throw a party, but I don't, I'll sit here and cut. Like I'm not like a old school DJ AM who's yeah. cutting into records and shit like that. I'll blend shit and I'll keep going and shit like that. But yeah, yeah, man, it's, it's tough. And then getting unmotivated, like, all through COVID, dude, I haven't been DJing. So I'm yeah. just like, I have people that will hit me up and be like, can you do this last minute? And I'm like, you know, it's tough. I don't want to do it without a crowd. I don't want to like, I don't want to do like, it's not without a crowd, but no dance floor, not yeah. having that energy to feed off of. Actually, you it's know what? Yeah. That kind of brings me into a good question. You fought with this empty state, like the, at the apex center with no yeah. crowd in there. Is that different for you? Is it- yeah, it is. It is. It's nice. Cause you can hear everybody and it's like, cool, whatever. But, dude, I get excited. Like, I just sure always remember, like, my UFC debuts here in Milwaukee against Danny Gay. Danny Gay's fucking murdering people now. And, yeah, he's and, top 10, dude. Yeah. I saw that on your record. I was like, dude, he fought Ige back in the day. I was like, god damn, that's a killer. Yeah, I'm just like, uh. And then uh, that's just depressing. I want to circle back around to him, too, but I need to win. But uh, I just remember like, hearing everybody, like, when I did something, I'm like, oh, yeah, like, I am doing something right. I'm doing something right. I just need to keep keep doing that. And kind of circling around to what you were saying, like, Dude, I uh, I was, I was so like there was a short period of time where I wanted to prove myself to everybody because uh, I felt like if I didn't make it to the UFC, like I had failed, like you know, like I am a complete failure, and you know, I put all my time into this thing, and uh, it just you know just oh hey, what are you doing ten years later? And it's like you know, yeah, are you still fighting and. I talked to some people before the UFC and that's kind of like how they talked to me. And I think it, it's like, I don't think they meant to like hurt my feelings or meant to like, like be like that with me, mm-hmm. but it's like, I could see it in the way they talked to me and the tone of their voice. Like, Oh yeah, you still doing that. You, you still doing that fighting. Like as if I was like a joke mm-hmm. and it offended me, but I never said anything and I was kind of like, okay, whatever. Cool. And then when I got signed to the UFC, you know, the same people, oh, man, we knew you were going to make it. Did you? Did you know I was going to make it? Because it didn't seem like you. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you said you you were treating me kind of funny, but it's okay. I'm not going to sit here and rub it in anybody's face. Um, I just had to let, at least over the last six months, even over the last year, I needed to let go of that. I'm not trying to prove myself to anybody. I'm trying to prove myself to me. I have my son. I have... You know, I'm sorry. I get super emotional about that. It's all good, dude. Dude, I'm like, I'm not trying to prove myself to anybody. I just need to like go out there and fucking be me and uh, have fun. You know, there's there's a couple of things that with what you said makes me think of. Number one, I have. I've too had I've been Oof. in that situation. You good? Yeah. Okay. Man, I'm sorry. I'm like, oh no, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. This is a safe place for you to talk, man. I've been in the same place where you've had people. I've had people come up to me and be like, I'll, "I'll like a high school reunion," and they're like, "Dude, you're still DJing?" I'm like, "Yeah, dude, I'm really good at it. Like, I've made mm-hmm. a lot of money off of it. I've got to see a lot of this world on other people's money, and yeah. and, and it's great. I've had a lot of free vacations. I have amazing fucking stories." But there's that weird thing where people are going to talk about you. The same people that talk shit about you are going to talk about how they met you when you're really successful. And the people that doubt you, I always thought success would be my best revenge. So when I was doing things that like I thought that were spectacular in my career, I was, you know, I was working with people from uh, playboy.com or uh, playboy TV. I was working with, Kid Rock. I was working with Tommy Lee. I was doing all these events. I was, fuck, I was opening for two live crew. All this shit that I was doing, I would turn around and be like, that's my revenge right there. Every time there was yeah. another step that I was like, that's my revenge right there. For everyone that said shit, that fucking doubted me, I was like, there you go. I'm fucking crap. <laughs> like, fuck you, I did it. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's what it is, dude, is that it's, it's the same fucking mindset, is that you gotta have kind of a chip on your shoulder. You got it. You got to have that, that dude, uh, I'm thinking of a uh, puff daddy when he had that, that, um, that campaign for voter die, win or die, win or die. Yeah. Just, you know, that's, that's the way I was looking at it. Ugh. And there was so much shit that I was chasing. Um, 
But at the same time, like, dude, it was so much fun. The the ride's amazing. Yeah. But you got to enjoy it too. You got to enjoy it. I think there's this like, and and I've been thinking about. I'm back. I'm no longer emotional. <laughs> You're good, dude. Uh, You're all good, man. I think there's this like never ending. You're right. There's this never ending chase, so, and there you have to kind of step back and just be like, like it's just. I guess it's on. You have to be content, like with where you're at, and you. And I feel like, uh, for me personally, like I wasn't giving myself a pat on the back for, hey man, you did it. Hey, you made it to the UFC. Hey, you were the champion of three different orga- organizations, and you defended your belt. It was never enough. It was I won a title, a national title, one month. Two, two or three weeks later, I won the King of the Cage title. I remember that. One. Uh, and then I defended the King of the Cage title back to back for like like a crazy amount of times within one year. Then I found out about my son. I got super depressed. My fiance left me. I was almost homeless. My uh, uncle Charlie died, <laughs> and uh... Ugh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're all good, dude. Don't apologize, man. Yeah. But all that stuff happened, and I was still like, oh, it's not good enough. So I came back after basically not fighting for like a year, and I sparred Anthony for Anthony and Paul Felder. Those are my only sparring partners for like one whole year. Yeah. And I go, okay, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight uh, as much as I can, and I'm going to give it, you know, try my hardest. Uh, and if I don't make it about time I'm 30, then I'll just give up and I'll go get a regular job. And so basically I, uh, I fought four times in eight months. I got signed to the UFC and then I just went from there, but still made to the UFC. Didn't win my UFC debut. Didn't win the second one, won the third one. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, I, I, I was never content the whole time. And I just think, uh, I'm starting to get to that point where I'm like, dude, you know what? You're good. <laughs> like relax. Like it's not that serious. Cause I'd sit here and just fucking cry over stuff that like, I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it means something to me. So I think, uh, yeah, I'm an emotional dude. No, it's all good. <laughs> listen, listen, wow. safe place. All good. Let me ask you something though. When all this stuff was going on, you know, your, your uncle dying, you finding out about your son and almost being homeless. Was that, was that fuel for the fire? Was it one of those where like you would <clears throat> like, would you wake up and would you be like, fuck, you know, it's cloudy out. It's this. I don't want to get out of bed. Or were you like, I got to pack my bag. I got to go into the gym. I need to fucking hit something. I need, yeah. to, I need to fuck something up. I need to, I need to destroy something or I need to distract myself. Uh, for, for me, sometimes when I'm going through shit, like uh, thinking about what I'm doing, like sparring, sparring is probably the best one where yeah. I'm not thinking about what's going on in my life. I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about Ryan Mueller and his fucking tall ass motherfucker <laughs> six four. He he weighs as much as I do, yeah. and I think about well, I gotta hit his body to get his give him to put his hand down so I can crack him in the head. Or yeah. you know, that's the shit I'm thinking about. Yeah. Is it the same for you, man? You know what? I just wanted to to I wanted to just fight everybody. I think the biggest thing for me is I remember uh you know I at one point. Uh, I was kicked out of Rufus Sport at one point, and this is way, this is back, way back then. And I was kind of hopping around, and I just remember after, literally, I texted Duke uh, the night after my my Uncle Charlie died, and I I don't even think he knew. I just texted him, hey, you know, uh, you're right about me. Um, I don't train enough. I'm, you know, and I I apologize to him. And I said, uh, you know, I'll, I'll change things. And he texted me back and he said, okay, I'll see you on Monday. And I said, okay, cool. So I, you know, I came in and I just remember thinking, uh, I was, uh, what was I? I was, huh, I was one in three as a pro. And I just remember being like, dude, what, like what was wrong with me? Cause I was so good as an amateur. And I was like, what the fuck's wrong with me? You know, like what's going on. And to be honest, I was afraid of, I was afraid of like Anthony and I was afraid of, uh, I guess I was just, a, I, I asked myself, I was like, you know, why, what am I afraid of? And I was like, what am I afraid of getting hit by, by Anthony? Am I afraid of getting hit by these guys that are good? Eric Coke was there. Mm-hmm. Um, am I afraid? And I just remember after uh, Michael Charlie died, I was like, I was like, I just, I want, I want to 
somebody to hit me. I want, dude, I wanted to like get hit. I wanted to feel something. And then I was just like, fuck it. And I just went in there and I was like, I'm going to spy Anthony as much as I can. And I said, fuck it. I'm going to go fight. I'm going to fight everybody. And, uh, and yeah, so that's, that's a couple of years ago when Eric was there. And at that time, dude, it was a fucking murderer's row of like 45ers, 55ers, Manny, fucking all those dudes were all coming up. And Anthony was at his fucking peak at the time, dude. And honestly, Paul Felder too, that dude's a fucking tough motherfucker to fucking train with too. You know, yeah. you got you got through all those guys and you absorbed all that knowledge. Dude, you can go in there, you can do fucking anything, man. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I I believe it. And you know, it's nice being with Manny and and being around Sergio and being around Anthony and being around all these like positive people and you know, Manny even the other day and even Rafi on Stotts, dude, they're like, "Dude, you're you're a ba-. they're telling me this, that you're a bad motherfucker when you go and you just do. You just go." And I don't think they realize like how much that means to me. And I'm like, man, like, or I saw I was grocery shopping and somebody recognized me. Like people recognize me in Vegas now, which is like really weird to me. And Mm -hmm. uh, they're like, man, you are so, oh man, I saw you. Some people like follow my fights from like, you know, six years ago. And I'm like, that's fucking cool. And in my head, they're probably looking like, oh, you know, from the way they're treating me, I'm like, they're like, oh, Jordan, oh, native psycho, whatever. And in my head, I'm like, man, you're like, fucking awesome like <laughs> it's weird isn't it yeah like, like when people come up to you shit. like they know they know your <laughs> shit and you know nothing about them and they're and they know they know what you've done in your career yeah they know what you've done so on and so forth and they can recite shit to you and you're like i have no idea who the fuck you are and it's yeah. it's extremely weird when it's so there's <clears throat> In the microcosm that is social media, there's your local social media and there's everything outside of that. There are people that will that will hit you up and they'll you'll see like the random like add me as a friend, so on and so forth. <clears throat> I don't know who the fuck they are, but I'm like, uh, I'm the older I've gotten, I I keep my circle a little bit tighter now. Yeah. But it's weird when you go out and people are like, dude, it's you. And I'm like, yeah, it's just me. You want to do a shot with me? Whatever. And I'm like, yeah. no, dude, like I heard that mix that you did or you posted this live set, so on and so forth. Or yeah. or the really weird one now is like people will come up and they'll be like, dude, I'm watching your podcast. Like, dude, you're, you're doing That's really cool. well. Like you sound real professional. Or um, I get a lot of feedback on that. And it's weird because it's strangers now. Where like before a lot That's of this. Tight. Yeah, and it's just <laughs> like, it's crazy to me. Um, oh, yeah. But having people come up to you is just, it's it's weird. It's I remember um, when I was a, when I was a lot younger, I didn't handle it really well. Like especially when I was out, I would drink a lot. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, I drank a lot to begin with, but as soon as it got to that point of where it was uncomfortable, this was my crutch. This was a vodka soda. I was just like, uh huh, yeah. And I would always keep my drink between me and whoever else because I was just so uncomfortable. Where people are asking you shit about yourself, like, what was it like to work with so and so and all this other shit? And I'm like, oh, the fucking Bob's cool. I introduced him to his girlfriend. And they're like, that's so fucking crazy. I'm like, they've been together for like a year and a half now. I'm like, I don't know, dude. I was like, <laughs> I don't see her anymore. I was like, I, yeah. I worked with him once, so on and so forth. And it's weird, man. It's just fucking weird. But I always just try and be cool with everyone. Uh, I always just, you know, it, it's weird. It, it's, you, you can't explain it to people that, that don't experience it. It's just weird that people can come up, know exactly what's going mm. on and you try and move on from it. But it's also mm. one of those cool things where it's like, it's positive reinforcement where you're like, I'm doing something right. Shit, yeah. dude. Like my mom will tell me stories. I don't know if you get the same thing from your mom. Like my mom will come up and tell me, she's like, Oh, I ran to so-and-so like, cause my mom yeah. still lives in Oak Creek. Yeah. It's like, I ran to so-and-so. They went to high school with you. She was asking all these questions about like, are you still writing? Are you still doing music and all this other shit? And I was like, holy fuck, I haven't seen that person in 20 some fucking years. I was like, they're still fucking, they still know that that's what I was doing. I was like, God damn, dude, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. Excuse me. But yeah, dude, it's, it's nuts. Does your, your parents, your family ever get shit like that? Oh yeah. Yeah. All the time. Like my mom, my mom is you know, my biggest fan and yeah. So she'll tell your mom's tell cool me. as fuck, by the way. Dude. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, she's always down to down to clown, down to party. Hell yeah, dude. You met her at uh, what Taylor's? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, are you Mama Griff? I was like, come here, let me get a big hug. <laughs> and nobody knows it's my mom because she. I mean, me and her don't look anything alike, really. But you like, introduced me, so I was like, I was yeah. like, come here, Mama Griff. <laughs> I'm like, this is my mom. They're like, oh my god, that's your mom. Like people used to like ask if I was adopted and stuff. I was like, no, dude, this is like my mom. This is my mom. Like, yeah. <laughs> so. But yeah, she's cool, and you know, uh, she's always supported like my fighting. My whole family's been very supportive, and you know, I can't, I can't complain. So when let me ask you something. Uh, I never asked you this before. When you were doing King of the Cage, that stuff's usually on a reservation, right? Yep. So w- was so your mom's the Native American one of the family, correct? Yeah. So my mom's Native American and Mexican. She's half Oneida and half Ojibwe. Okay. And they're from, and then my grandmother's full blooded, uh, full blooded. She's full blooded native, and my grandfather's full blooded Mexican. So, did they ever have anything on any of the reservations that were tied to you, or was it stuff that they came out for when it was on the reservation? Oh, stuff I've, like that? I've said it before. So the one time, this is, uh, this is literally actually, this is the first fight after, like, literally after my uncle Charlie died, and uh, I was like, fuck it, um, I got a call. It was if. I swear to God, it, it there's some things that happen in my life that I'm like, somebody's looking out for me um, because things just happen and like it just doesn't make any sense to me. So I literally am laying on the cr- couch being sad and it's like maybe, what is it? It's like maybe three in the morning. Cool. I get a call from my cousin Drew. My Uncle Charlie died. All that stuff happened that day. And then literally maybe two days later, I get a call from a guy, a promoter, a random promoter. And he's like, hey, you want to fight? And I was late on my rent. So like, I was like, uh, yeah, sure. I'll take the fight. Where is it? You know, this, this and that. And I was literally getting evicted. So I was just paying my rent and then, you know, going to end up leaving you mm-hmm. know, a couple of weeks later. So basically, uh, I take the fight. The guy goes, it's on Bad River and uh, Bad River Van. I said, holy shit, that's my tribe. Oh, shit. Dude. I said, he goes, really? I go, yeah. He said, cool. Well, I'll show up and I'll fight. I showed up and I made weight. I was not on weight. He didn't even care. And he was like, yeah, here goes 900, 900. You make $1,800 if you win this fight. I said, okay, sounds good. He said, take it easy on this guy. This guy has a family. You know, just take it easy. He's willing to jump in there last minute with you. We just need this show to be great. And we were in the main, it was my first time doing a main event ever. Mm-hmm. And I think, I don't even know what my record was. It wasn't good though. And, uh, so basically I fought the guy and, uh, I found out later that he was my cousin and that like he was like my older cousin and that uh, he had last time he had seen me i was like you know small oh shit. and uh i go out there and i kick yeah i broke his nose oh and i submitted him pretty fast and uh but you know we were cool after and yeah it was so funny <laughs> though like i had like other cousins and shit like yeah yeah whoop his ass yeah that motherfucker owes me money like, <laughs> 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 and i'm sitting there like like okay <laughs> 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 shit dude that's fucking and, awesome uh, yeah i whoop his ass and then um yeah I don't, I don't know that was that's that's my one time i fought on my <laughs> reservation it was against my cousin you, you can actually see it on youtube and at the end they'll say these guys are related <laughs> <laughs> wait so did you learn that day when you came into it that you guys were related or afterwards i learned because we were dude we're talking 24 hours yeah we're talking like he oh asked so you got me, the- he asked me if i wanted to fight and it was Wednesday or Thursday, and I was fighting Friday or Friday or Saturday. Oh shit! So I got my shit up. It, like I said, it was like a godsend. I was like, yeah. dude, I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna make this money. I just got fired from my job off some really stupid shit, and I was like, fuck. And my car broke down too, so I had to had somebody. Dude, it was bad. A lot of shit hit me at one time. I was like, dude, Damn. this shit is not like no. I don't know what the fuck's going on. So when I got that call, I was like, let's go. When is the fight? Thinking I got some time. He was like, oh, it's Saturday. <laughs> like, boom. I guess I'm I'm going to go. And then uh, I found out maybe, you know, let's just say it happened on like a Thursday or it happened on like a Wednesday. I think Thursday I told my mom or the, and my mom's like, 
yeah, you're, that's your cousin. You know, that's your cousin, right? I was like, oh, shit, really? And they were like, yeah. And so we all drove up north, and we all, you know, we had the fight, and it was, I don't know. And then Sunday, you guys are all hanging out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was fun. I mean, dude, my, the native side of my family, like everybody up north, they've been so supportive. They showed up to all of my fights that are on the res. They're in the crowd. Yeah, he's Native American. You know, because people see me, and they're like, is he Native? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, and, uh, and people are like, you know, kind of question like why is he why is he you know say he's native and this and that well it's because my grandmother like i didn't know my dad really or any side of my dad's family Mm -hmm. and uh my grandmother's native american i spent a lot of my time with her so she was hey jordan wherever you go you know let people know that you're native american and blah 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 and so i'm sitting there and duke's like you know we should you should really start representing your roots you know let's call you and at the time it was psycho hammer and i was really like feeding into that like that mind zone like i'm gonna fucking kill somebody you know yeah and duke's like here you know let's call you native psycho let's call you native psycho and yeah so we changed it to that and then i had won the titles and stuff like that and all of my fights were on the res and so my res the family from the res they'd all come to the res different Fuck reservations yeah, and they'd rep super hard so that's fucking awesome, man. Especially when you got the the whole family and the the whole tribe behind you too. That's crazy. Your first fight in your on your uh, home tribe, you had to fight a cousin, dude. Yeah. That's a, do you know what, dude? That's a really good story, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So people are like, no fucking way. I'm like, they're like, that doesn't sound real. I'm like, it happened. <laughs> I'm like, whatever. Let me ask you something. What was it like doing the contender series then? Because it's it's kind of the same way it is now, where it's it's at the apex. There's no crowd. Was yeah. it was it the same thing where it was like, was it was life going better for you at that point? Because I know you had, you defended a couple of times for King of the Cage and was it XFO, uh, R R R F O I think R F O or R F A yeah something like that R F O it was something like that it was yeah but they were, um I mean things were okay I I think I've hit these like weird gaps in my life up to this point where I'm like I get this like weird look on my face. And I think my mom and, like, everyone who's, like, very close to me, they kind of feel it, like, in the air. And I just start to act like like I have nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just kind of like, yeah, we're going to go in here and we're going to do whatever whatever happens, happens. You know what I mean? And I'd hit – whenever I do hit those points, though, awesome shit happens because I'm just not thinking so much and – You know, whenever I'm, whenever I'm, whenever I'm thinking too much or whenever I'm not thinking too much about something, great things happen. Whenever I'm thinking too much about something, then I'm trying to be too perfect and I'm over here and I'm trying to do this. It's just like, it's fucking terrible. So I'm at a point, I am back to that point right now, just to let everyone know, everyone know (laughs) I'm back to that point where I, whatever the fuck happens, happens. (laughs) So April 10th, like that, that's just how I am. I'm just kind of like. Let's just go with it, you know? Just wild the fuck out, dude. I mean, sometimes yeah. you just got to hit that fuck it button, bro. Yeah, for sure. And just it fucking helps. Go, yeah, go out there and it get helps. fucking wild, dude. So. Just no fucking safety net. <laughs> just be like, fuck it, man. Whatever happens, happens, man. Yeah. Improvise fucking like Diamond Dave from uh, Van Halen. You got to hit the ground running, bro. Well, my, my biggest thing used to be like, man, and I've heard other fighters say it, and it was kind of like it, you know, I've... When I heard others, when I heard somebody else say it, it made me feel almost better that I wasn't the only one thinking it. You know what I mean? I'm not crazy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it was, yeah, it's the end of the world if I lose. It's the end. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And um, I don't want to, I never want to use that as like a scapegoat. Like, oh, yeah, I lo-, you know, it's the end of the world, whatever. I'm going to, no. I, whenever I step in the cage, I want to go win. I want to fucking beat the shit out of somebody. I want to feel great about myself. I want to, you know, I want everything that all other fighters want. But at the end of the day, I think, um, again, it just circles back around to, like, I can't be so hard on myself. I need to, like, relax and, like, at least, you know, don't be so, like, if I lose this fight, my life's over. Like, <laughs> it's done. And I think when I really started to realize that, like, the tension and you know in here and the tension all around me kind of went down yeah. and it's great it's a great feeling you know so well, i'm definitely looking forward to it the, actually you know that whole card's pretty stacked darren till uh i think darren Till's the, on that yeah 185 or, and then i saw you got mckenzie dern she's on that one is she yeah she's fighting nina and hands off and mike perry's on that one too do you got a pretty stacked card dude mike perry's the shit man 
I like him. That's a wild motherfucker too, dude. Dude, I like him. He's cool. He's cool in person too. Like I talked to him. And I was like, dude, I'm a fan. He's like, thanks, man. Thanks, dude, bro. That, you want to talk about <laughs> wild motherfuckers? I remember. Uh, so they had just started doing the Apex fights after COVID, and like for whatever reason, I've taken notice where I was like, there's some fucking hot blonde chick that's always in his corner. She looks like the chick from um, not Lord of the Rings. Random. What the hell's the name of that show on HBO with the fucking dragon? Uh, the fucking game of thrones <laughs> dude this chick looked like the fucking the mother of dragons i was like yeah she looks like khaleesi <laughs> fuck randon knows that shit for sure no. i asked me a question about hey, you he said the name <laughs> <laughs> he turned around you turned around fast as hell he said the name what's her name khaleesi dude hey man her you got a fucking microphone for a her, reason her, player. Na- her name's her name's <laughs> her name's khaleesi yeah khaleesi yeah. This was you. you were... Khaleesi? <laughs> He's like, I know that bitch. I know her really well. I said, damn. Yeah. So yeah, his girlfriend looks like the fucking mother of dragons, Khaleesi. And I was like, I was like, oh, you got a bad bitch in your corner. And all of a sudden I was like, did she dye her hair? What the fuck? Because he, sh- he showed up with some brunette. And they're yeah. like, yeah, that's his new corner. That's his new chick. It's and I was like, girlfriend. I was like, shut the fuck Bro, up. I was over like, there holding pads and everything, like A for effort. Dude, that's a bad bitch contest. She got first place, dude. You're holding for fucking Perry. That chick looks like she's 100 pounds soaking wet. She's tiny. She's real tiny. Dude, she's going to be holding pads like this, bro. Like, yeah. I got you, baby. Uh, <laughs> hey, that's fight, though. That is cool shit. <laughs> dude, I remember watching that fight, and I was like, and they cut to commercial after the first round. And I was like, dude, I was pissed. I was like, I wanted to hear what the hell that bitch was saying in the corner, bro. I was like, what kind of advice are you? So they cut back and they're like, they're like, they did like a 30 second timeout and they came back and she was just like, you're doing really good, baby. You're doing really good. And he was just like, he's just like nodding his head and he like gets up, goes back out for the second round. I was like, yeah. if you guys cut the commercial, I'm like, I will cancel my ESPN subscription. And yeah. then she had, dude, she had a win. He won that fight. I I don't think it, it was Mickey Gall. I, I, I saw that one, and it. Uh, no, it, he did fight Mickey Gall. Yeah, on that it one. was Mickey Gall. I was, dude. There, there, that that just shows like just positive reinforcement. Like you don't need like you know. Obviously, it is great to have world class coaches in your corner, but sometimes, dude, when you're just in a rough fucking spot, like you just need someone to tell you you can fucking do it, and that yeah. shit's awesome. Like you're just like. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Like, <laughs> dude, that girl was in my corner. I'd fucking knock anyone out, dude. Uh, <laughs> dude, I'd be like, Kelly, just wait right here. I'm gonna go knock this motherfucker out. Oh We're God. going out for food after this. I, I did that with uh, <laughs> my little brother, my little brother, and a couple of my friends. And uh, he's like, my little brother's looking at me because nobody could come up and corner me. And this is like earlier on, mm-hmm. and. He's looking at me and he, you could tell, you could just see like, he's so fucking afraid or he doesn't know what to say to me. And I said, don't worry about it, man. When the ring, when the round's over, just bring me my water and go back there. You're doing a great job. And then we go in there. He gives me the, uh, he gives me the water. We get in there, gives me water. They call my name. I go out there. I fucking murder this dude in the first round. I come back and said, see, it was that easy. And he just <laughs> laughed. <laughs> And he just has the cheesiest smile on his face. And I'll always remember that. My little brother's like, oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) That's fucking crazy. Yeah. So, Oh, man. So let me ask you something. Before you came to Rufus Sport, where were you at beforehand? I was at Adrian Serrano's. And then I uh, went from Adrian Serrano's to Red Schaefer's. And Mm -hmm. no, I think I went from, yeah, from Red. I was at Adrian Serrano's. Then I was at Rufus Sport. Then I was at Red Schaefer's. Then I was back to Rufus Sport. And then there was a weird little point where I was just like floating around places, grappling random people mm-hmm. at different gyms. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so and then I just ended up at Rufus Sport and stayed there. You know, I've been there the whole time. So fucking nice, man. Yeah. Holy shit. It's 930 already. Is it? Damn, dude. We went. Shit. We got an hour. I think we got like at least 90 minutes in. God damn. Cut out dude. all that part of me almost crying and shit. Oh, d- uh, I got no! Bad- I got bad news for you, homie. We were live, brother. Damn. <laughs> it'll be uh it'll be uploaded to uh YouTube afterwards. No, man, dude, don't even don't even fucking fret about, it, dude. It's it's 2021, dude. Fucking real men cry these days. Right. I I always made the joke that I was like when I was growing up, I, I'll, I'll tell this quick story and, and, and we'll wrap this up. And I got to go over my notes really quick to make sure I covered everything. But right. um, I remember there was a, a funeral maybe about eight or nine years ago. Our our Aunt Kathy had passed away and we ended up going to Sturgeon Bay for the funeral. And uh, at the time, my ex at the time, we were on decent terms. But we weren't, I don't think we were working on getting back together, but we were still pretty friends, pretty yeah. good friends that like, 
when she was going through shit, she would call me. When I was going through shit, I would call her. And uh, she randomly texted me. It was like, hey, how you doing? And I was like, not good. And she calls me right away. And she's like, what's going on? I was like, my aunt passed away. And I was really close with her. And we always did these camping trips when, when we were younger where we would go up to their um, yeah. their campsite. And we would we'd hang out for the weekend. We had like a camper trailer where we, him and my little sister would run around and bike around. And I would sit back with my Aunt Kathy and... She would sneak me a beer. Uh, sorry, mom. Uh, <laughs> she would sneak me a beer, and we would and we would wrap. We'd wrap around a campfire and shit like that. And I would talk to her about the shit that was going on in my life. So when she passed away, I, I took it really hard. Mm. So she ended up coming out, and Jenny and I had probably about eight or nine years between us of dating on again, off again. And I didn't realize it until the funeral that she had never seen me cry before. Mm-hmm. So. I start, I'm Niagara Falls at this Mm -hmm. and she leans over and she goes, Hey, do you want me to go get your allergy medicine? And I went, what? (laughs) And she goes, she goes, your eyes are watering up. They probably just cut the grass or something. Do you have your allergy meds in your, in your, in your car? And I was like, I'm fucking crying. And she's like, I've never seen you cry before. And I was like, I'm I'm good. And she like, she's digging through her purse. She pulls out a (laughs) tissue. And I was like, God damn, I didn't really think about it that like I like for the longest time I never fucking cried. Well, and it was one of those that like I felt a tear coming out and I was like, yeah, nope, gonna suck it back because that's just the way it was back then. And now it's like, no, man, it fucking happens. Dude. It's no big deal. Yeah. yeah, it's dude. It's tough because, yeah, I feel like like I feel like people and uh, society thinks that we like, hey, you got to hold that shit in. And for the most part, it really is like that in real life. Yeah, dude. Hey, you lost your job? Uh, too fucking bad. Hold that shit in. Hey, you know, your your fucking girl left you or your fiance left you, your home who who the fuck cares? Oh, somebody died? Huh. Hey man, that's really rough though. But no, seriously, you gotta get back to work. Oh, you know, you can't see your kid? Don't worry about it. You know, this, this and that. You but you gotta get back to work. We need money. Yeah. And that's how like I feel people treat men and I think it's fucking disgusting. You know what I mean? Like we should be able to, dude. Yeah, I have a kid. I love my kid. Yeah, I love my, you know, I love my uncle. Yeah, I love my family. That's why I fight so hard, dude. If I want to cry because I lost something or because I'm broke or because I'm having a really hard time, you should just let me do it and not shame me for it. Yeah. And I think that's like that's the most hardest thing, especially being in like for a fighter or it's hard for any man, but when you're a fighter, it's like you should be the toughest motherfucker ever and. I'm the I'm I can be the first one to look into the camera and say, look, when it's time for me to be tough, dude, you could come at me with a bat and hit me in the head and I'm gonna be like, okay, motherfucker, like let's go. But like, yeah, there's times when I just cry. I cry all the time, to be honest. So I you know what it is. The last the last good one I had, um, I had a friend, uh, Allie that passed away about two years ago, and that was that was a hard one. I remember uh, I was sitting right on those stairs and I was I was kind of typing something up because I, I didn't know I didn't have I, I wasn't talking to anyone about it and I kind of just typed something up so I could write it out and I'm writing and I'm just pouring tears and I mean that was probably the uh, outside of our cousin passing away our, our cousin Ryan passed away about a oh, year, year and a half ago but um oh my grandfather too I was yeah so I mean it happens but you know what yeah. there's sad stuff that happens but there's also beautiful things that I've seen happen where it's mm-hmm. like you tell someone how you really feel about them and you, yeah. you feel that tear coming out and you're like, <laughs> you're like it's the fucking real deal right there. Don't be a pussy Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> no, like when, when it comes out, I'm like, yo, that's, that's, that's the realness. That's the yeah. realness coming through. For real. That's the realness, you know, being shown. And, you know, especially like, you know, around my brother, around my girlfriend, uh, around my really close friends. I'm like, I don't give a fuck if you see me crying, dude, I'm, I'm turning 40 and, 48 hours man really yeah oh shit <laughs> but if i could take a shot with you i would you know what we, you know what <laughs> i will say something um i have this amazing japanese whiskey that randon got me for christmas i still have not opened it yet yeah we're gonna crack into that uh as soon as we get done with this but i've been i've been eyeing it up for a while i've yeah. been waiting for the, the right occasion i was like you know what tonight feels like the right one but uh actually you know what randon you are, are we on me or are we on jordan camera wise you want to you wanna go run and grab that bottle. We can crack that open. We can do a shot on air. Do you want to grab a... Do you know where the rocks glasses are? On the, on the left side of the top shelf. Grab two of those. Do you want one too? 
You sure? Okay. Yeah. So, number one, having a producer for this show is amazing because I'll be able to pull dope shit like that where I'm like, dude, do yeah. me a favor. Grab this, grab that. When We're did gonna... you start getting a producer? Like, how many shows in? So, we did it right off the word go. So, okay. I had I talked to Randon about... So, Randon works at WISN. Uh, oh, okay, really? So, he went into broadcasting. I went into broadcasting, too. He went into the TV side of it, and I went into the broadcast, like radio and stuff like that. Yeah. And... uh we had this really amazing uh, TV production studio that kind of started us out in high school. Shout out to Mr. Stock. I don't, I don't know if he's tuning in, but um, this is this is the whiskey that he got for me for Christmas, and I've been meaning oh, to wow. uh, yeah. So pull that out. That's pretty cool. And I've been I've been wanting to open that for a while, but I don't drink at all. Yeah, like you take like one sip and you're like, Ugh. yeah. Well, that, <laughs> that's the thing, man. Is that like it's to the point now where because I'm not DJing, oh no need for the ice, dude. Oh. Yeah, it's all good. We're just we're just gonna rip a shot. But dude, thank you for thinking of that. Um, I uh I don't drink at all anymore. Like yeah. I like I said, dude, I had two beers while I was out from seven o'clock to one a.m. Yeah. And then I came home and I had a beer and I remember looking over at Callie. I was like, I'm fucking smacked. I was like, <laughs> we need to go to bed. Lightweights. Yeah, yeah dude, I'm yeah. such a fucking lightweight. I'm now. the same way now. I could go out, drink a whole bottle, be all fucked up, and then wake up and go to work the next day, yeah. and then go train too. Now, no, I'm done. I'm down for two days. Dude, two days. I used to. Uh, I've talked about this in the past, where I would go out to like four or five in the morning, and then I'd get up at nine, and I'd go hit eleven a.m. classes, and then I'd do I'd do eleven a.m. kickboxing, noon jujitsu. I'd go home and catch a nap, and then I'd go fucking DJ afterwards. Dude, that yeah. shit was. I I can't believe I did that for so many years. Where I remember at one point, um, who the fuck was I sparring with? It was like a Friday or some shit like that. I'm going to give you a take, short one. Yeah, just give me a little. Here, you know what? You pour because it's, it's hard for me to talk about it on the yeah, mic. Give Just a little guy right there. there That's perfect. Go. Just a little drop. Of yeah. That. Just so I can taste it. Ooh, it smells good. Yeah. It actually smells really good. Oh, shit. Yeah. Random. Like, good, co- good call on this, man. Yeah, it smells like. What is this? So this is a uh, this is a Japanese. It's a whiskey. Yeah, it's a blended whiskey. Usually, I'm like, oh, I'm, yeah, whiskey. Japanese. Here, cheers, brother. Thank you for doing the podcast, cheers. brother. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sorry oh. for being so fucking late, dude. <laughs> it happens. I was uh, oh, that goes down so smooth. Oh shit, dude. That is like that's dangerous. That's money. That that might yeah. dis- <laughs> that might disappear. That might disappear on Tuesday. I'm just giving you the heads up now. Yeah, that's dangerous. But um, <laughs> no, that's good, man. We'll we'll crack we'll crack that back open after you win your fight. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> but um, what was I gonna say? Uh, you know what? Let me make sure I got everything covered. Um, once again, I'm gonna remind everyone uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, like and subscribe. Uh, there's no real bonus to it, but you get the updates on whatever we do stuff. I've been debating about whether or not. Are you are you on Reddit? No. Okay, I got. I'll show you some shit afterwards. What is Reddit? Reddit is another social media, but it's a it's like a picture and video. Okay, There's, it's not so like the way Facebook is set up. You can do text, you can do pictures. It's a lot like um, it's an extension of Two Chan, where it's like a lot of pictures and stuff like that. But there's different sub what they call subreddits. Excuse me. One of them I follow is fight porn, and it's just like people who got their cameras out, fights pop off, and they fucking post them and shit like that. Oh. And I've debated about a long time about taking the videos from there and like putting them on screen and doing the voiceover for it and doing like actual commentary for it. Yeah. Here, hold on. Let me, let me pull one up for you real I gotta quick. Pull, I got to tell you about one guy. Hopefully I can find him. Oh, go ahead. Pull it up, dude. Let's see here. We'll do, uh, let's see, where is it? Fight porn. There we go. Let me find a good fight really quick. I'll give you a good example. Oh, that dude just gets fucking starched. Oh, this one's fucking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find a really good one. Right uh, here. They have the new Ganu one on here, too. God damn, Stipe just get fucking laid out, man. So this is my buddy from King of the Cage. You got to follow him. His name's Steve Inman. Okay. And, dude, he just, he does come, he like, he'll, he'll do, uh. Cockroach cubbies are back in the field trying to act like they're badass. So stunning, so brave, thinking they're going to try and block a car. Looks like they're going to try and block a car. Oh! Send that over to me. I want to follow that guy. Disgusting. Take a quick look at the replay. You can see right here a bunch of douchebags. So stunning, so brave. Oh my god! I can't believe you did that! 
Is this a homie of yours? Yeah, <laughs> dude, he's funny as fuck. And he just has like his videos are endless. And then he started this. Uh, he has this show that's on on Prime or it's on something. It's called Detective Jimmy Apple, and he uh -huh. asked me to be on it uh, like a couple times. And I want to go out there and. and check it out but yeah he dude he is just funny dude that guy's he's, hilarious he's a funny dude i definitely want to follow so here <laughs> i'll give you an example of fucking fight porn so they'll be like they'll be like shit like this <laughs> wait wait watch this motherfucker dude he starts fucking <gasps> boom <Destroyed>. starts <laughs> starts dancing <laughs> and then what 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 boom <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this shit's the best. Oh. Dude, a shout out to my homie Ryan Parks. Dude, him and I, all we do is we send this shit back and forth to each other all fucking day. And I was like, bro, I was like, I got to do voiceovers for this shit because it's just fucking hilarious. But it's like, it's quick prep. What else we got on here? What's this one? Oh, wait, wait, wait. We got we to gotta rewind that one back. Dude, slip. Boom. Dude, these are, Randy, are you getting these on camera? Yeah, I'm getting them. All right, fuck yeah. Oh, this fucking dude. This dude gets... All right, so this dude's he's in a tube in uh in England, and he's been talking shit to all these black dudes. Just fucking lays them the ah, fuck out. Man. He was saying all this racist shit. Oh, he was. Ooh, put him, sent him back in time. Dude, watch this. And he, <laughs> Dude, he was singing some fucking racist-ass song. So uh, this version of the London racist incident. So this video was initially like six minutes long. And they have like, yeah. he's singing and he's talking shit to everyone. And everyone's like, dude, no one wants to hear your fucking racist shit. And so he's fucking with these three teenagers right here. And he's like, he's talking shit. The guy's not saying anything. He's just trying to walk like on. His size, now, you know, blue jacket. Whoa. Boom. Damn. Sent that motherfucker to the astral plane. Oh my god! Hey, he threw it right by his homie's head too. Yeah, just <laughs> like the right around his head. Just hit him. Oh my god! Good thing they didn't hit him afterwards, though. That's good. Yeah, he was yeah, down. He was they on. no, they're 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 telling him what's up. They're like, "Fuck you and your racist ass shit." <laughs> they're, they're, hey, you alive? Someone actually checked. Him. Hey, hey, y'all want to see a dead body? <laughs> <laughs> dude, oh my I, god! So listen, I gotta get you on Reddit. This uh, dude, you'll spend hours watching this shit, dude. Just fucking howling. I I'm like that on TikTok right now, actually. It's I can't horrible, do, dude. It's I can't horrible. do the TikTok shit, dude. It is horrible. I got hair on my chest, bro. I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't do anything on TikTok, but I just watch it and then I start watching it and I'm like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I was really hoping Trump was gonna ban it because I was like, fuck, dude. I don't want to have to pick up another social fucking media, <laughs> dude. I dropped Snapchat because it was just, dude. It was lame. I I couldn't do it like i hate using facebook to begin with like when mm -hmm. the when the lockdown happened um i had said i was like if i ever wasn't a dj i would delete that shit mm -hmm. because i was like eh. if i don't have to promote what the fuck i'm doing yeah i was like ah, there's no reason for me to fucking have this it's too much negativity people are fucking fighting all the time and shit like that so it was nice to be able to just delete all of that shit I, dude, I fucking love Instagram, dude. I love, yeah. dude. Number one, there are some Instagram tots on there, bro. Yeah. You go to search something, they're like, we know exactly what you're into, and uh. then, dude, I'll open it right now. It's big breasted redheads. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I'll pass, dude. They're everywhere. I can't. Uh, you know what? You know what? I'm not gonna get myself in trouble talking about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. We might have maybe 300 <laughs> viewers at most, but there's maybe five people who've actually tuned in and like watched yeah. the entire fucking thing. And it's usually family members of mine. And I'll be like, y'all talk dirty on there. <laughs> you guys got Playboy as a sponsor? Yeah, I used to fucking work for him. I don't know what to tell you. Right. They... I feel like we're desensitized to like, to like, like naked women because Crazy we worked shit, at the, 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 you know, the strip club. Yeah. So like, I, like if I saw a, like if a naked chick walked in here right now, I swear to God, I can maintain eye contact and I'd be like, Oh, what's up? You know what I mean? Because yeah. we just worked there for so long. But that first like two weeks I worked at, at the strip club, like, I think my eyes were like this big. <laughs> I was just like, 
and then after that i was like dude it's like wallpaper afterwards yeah these chicks are cool they act like they act like one of the homies like <laughs> dude they're cool dude i've warned my friends about them and they're like they're like dude call some strippers let's let, let's let's get together this party and i was like dude these fucking girls will drink you under the fucking Yo. table bro <laughs> <laughs> motherfucker you won't make it out the gate these girls are professionals like the, what they do is drink you. four or five days a week hard hard with dudes that are like they're like bigger you know, yeah <laughs> that are like if i say enough shit to this girl i might be able to fuck her that's that's the illusion dude and it, it it's don't never, work it don't work that way <laughs> it, it just don't and but there's that overconfidence where like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to flex. I'm going to spend this amount of money and she's going to come do this. No, it ain't going to happen. Yeah. And the girls that do do that, you don't want, dude. Yeah. Like, yeah, cause it's one sure. of those that like you do it and the next day you're like, is that ingrown hair or is that <laughs> the, the fuck is this oh shit? Oh my God. I don't know what the fuck. I got to call my doctor. Let me... <laughs> and let me tell you something, guys, not from personal experience, but if you ever have to get a test for something, it's usually not pleasant. If it's a, if it's a bacterial disease, yeah. gentlemen, they will stick a Q-tip into the head of your wiener and they will hit the back of your sack. You want to hear a funny story? Go for and it. And then we'll end it? Yeah, we'll end it. Okay. After. So uh, when I was younger, when I first started wrestling, I didn't know, like I'd never cut weight or anything. And I think I had cut weight too fast in the wrong way. And so I, my pee started coming out really like red, like dark. Oh. And I was like, I thought it actually was brown, very dark brown. I didn't even think it was, it was blood or anything. But, um, basically I went to the doctors. I got tested for like, you know, I had like just lost my virginity like a couple weeks previous. And I was like, oh my God, like I had sex. Like, is there something wrong with me? Like, and they were like, oh yeah, we're just going to test for HIV and all this other stuff. And I was like, oh my God. And so I didn't know that if they didn't call you back. That meant everything was okay. Two weeks go by and I'm sitting by my bed. I'm still like, like, like what's wrong with me? And I'm like, oh my God, like this shit starts to set in. Doesn't help that I'm sitting there smoking weed like endlessly. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm fucking dying. You know what I mean? Like, and so I fucking start getting paranoid and I'm like, I fucking got, I got AIDS. I got, I got this, you know, and I'm like, oh my God. And so I called him. I, I left him like five messages. Finally, a nurse calls me back and goes, Mr. Griffin, you're okay. I said, what do you mean? They said, it's good that we didn't call you. I said, so you didn't call me because there was nothing wrong with me? They go, yes. I said, Oh, I, I didn't know that. I you felt know how so stupid. Scary that is. <laughs> yeah. Damn. yeah, call motherfucker. But I found out later that it, it I was pretty much it's called Revno, where you work out too much and then your organs are kind of like slowly but surely shutting yeah. down. Yeah, and that that I was like I I was like damn near dying. And um, what I ended up doing is I ended up chugging like like uh like at least two gallons of water and just. And then I started feeling better. And then I found out I wasn't dying of, you know, some crazy STD. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, everything's good. <laughs> uh, dude, those, those tests are fucking, they're nuts. Dude. And the fucking phone call is the worst where it's like, a girl will call you up and be like, you got to go get tested. And I'm like, what, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, number oh one, we are done. And number two, if I see you again, we are not going to be friendly to one another. <laughs> thankfully, right. thankfully. Uh, Everything's whew, exactly. Knock on wood. <laughs> you know what? I don't even know how much real this actually is. <laughs> I don't even know. If this All is right, so I'll I'll real. share a similar one. Mine's not from poking. Mine's from a uh, from fucking drinking and almost put myself into renal failure. What? So I was in Vegas and I don't even think I was playing this week. And I think I was just out there partying. I think I like I caught like a cheap flight and I was like I'm gonna go hang out with the homies, dude. Yeah. I, listen, when Vegas reopens and you can actually go party and shit like that. Dude, we'll go out there. I'll show you some shit, dude. Fun. Dude, their door guy over at Dre's is a guy I used to work with. Dude's like 6'11". I call him Big Smooth. He's like 350 pounds. God fucking damn. white dude. Fucking... They call him... Uh, what the fuck they call him? They don't call him Big Country. They call him something. Lurch. I think they call him Lurch. Lurch? <laughs> and, uh, and dude, I used... Dude, I taught this dude how to bounce. Like, I was like, dude, I was like, you're so big. I was like, you don't have to say shit. I was right. Like, you can you just, just walk up. Just walk up, point to the door. People will go... And he's like, shut the fuck up. I was like, watch, dude. I was like, here's the thing. If more than five words come out of your mouth, people are going to realize you're a nice guy. I was like, don't talk. Yeah. Just don't talk. So what you would do is, is I would have an issue. I'm 5'9", I'm 5'10", five nine, five nine, five something like telling? that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd have some big fucking dude that's like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And I'm like, eh, you probably will. I was like, 
yo, smooth. He'd walk up and be like, what's up, boss? And I was like, this guy don't want to go. He's like, boss said you got to go. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. And they, they would turn around and they would like literally like look right into the center of his chest and then like look up and he'd be looking down on them and they'd be like, yeah, I'm going to go. Uh, that was <laughs> my tab. Listen, it was a pleasure doing business with you. I apologize. I did not realize you had Sasquatch on staff. <laughs> For real. For real. But to finish the story. um, So I was out there partying and I woke up one morning and I was like, I go take a piss. And I'm like. Oh, that smells like iron. And I like looked down. And I was like, oh, I'm pissing blood. And Ooh, I was shit. like, I was like, what did I do last night? I was like, I was drinking. I was partying. I was like, I didn't, I didn't hook up with anyone. I was like, what the fuck did I do? I was like, God damn it. And I was freaking out. And I was like, I'm in Vegas. I'm like, I don't know what to do. My mo- Our mom is a nurse. She was, a, she was an ER nurse at the time. It's like, I dude, I made the dreaded call. I was like, mom, I don't know what's going on. First fucking question out of her mouth. What kind of dirty whore did you hook up with? I was like, I didn't hook up with anyone. I was like, I woke up in my fucking hotel room by myself. And oh she's like, well, God. she's like, well, you're in Vegas. It's like summertime. I'm like, well, how much, how much water are you drinking? I was like, I don't know. How much is in a bottle of kettle one? She's like, maybe two ounces. I was like, I drank four to six ounces of water in the last 24 hours. She's like, oh, yeah, that'll do it. She's like, honey, you're probably going into kidney failure. She's like, you need to call your doctor. It's like, I ended up calling my doctor at the time. And he's like, where are you staying? I was like, I'm staying here. He's like, cool. He's like, this is the nearest hospital. He's like, you need to go there right now. He's like, you need to get rehydrated and you need to go get checked out. He's like, he's like, your he's like, your kidneys are probably going into failure. That's how hard you've partied in the last 24 hours. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I actually had to DJ while I was out there. Cause I remember like, they wanted to keep me for observation. I was like, yo, I was like, I took the IV out. I was like, yo, I got a show to play tonight. I was like. I'll come back afterwards. And they're like, yeah. no drinking. I was like, gotcha. Uh, yeah, I think I had like a couple of shots. Yeah. So I was, <laughs> just take the edge off. I was DJing. Wow. When you when you play those crowds, dude, it's not fucking easy. Like it's, it's crazy. Cause you can hear when you're, it's a lot. Like you said, when, uh-huh. when you're doing things right, you can hear the room. Like you can hear them go, Oh, and you're like, oh shit, and then you get hype, and you're like, fuck yeah. You're like, now I'm I got do, you. I'm gonna do that shit again. Like, watch. <laughs> yeah. But there's there's certain rooms like that, man, where it's just like you can hear everyone fucking pick up on what you're doing right away, and then it's at the same time there's rooms where they're just stale, like people are just yeah. holding up the wall and shit like that. Those rooms are hard to fucking play. It's 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 goofy, man. I don't know if it's the same for you, where it's like, you know what? I I would say probably the weirdest thing. I'm going to ask your opinion about this and we'll, we'll eventually wrap this up. <laughs> We're so ADD. <laughs> um, the, woo! Does that, does that fucking irritate you when you're fucking, when you're fighting or do you even hear that? I don't even like, I, I think one time I, I responded to somebody in the crowd because <laughs> it was funny. They were like, get up and punch him in the face. And I was like, I'm trying. <laughs> 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 so the the thing that I was referencing was everyone does that Ric Flair woo yeah yeah when when they're uh, Ric Flair's a shit bro dude, <laughs> dude. Rolex wearing kiss stealing limousine riding woo dude a fucking Ric Flair's a G man he's still doing that shit too dude, he's he's, he's old there. as fuck Tuh, wrestling did, did you ever see the thirty for thirty on him no all right dude pro- all right, number one if you have ESPN plus fucking the 30 for 30 on rick flair is fucking hilarious he tells a story and uh i forgot what he calls like the fucking chicks that he picks up he, he's like i think he calls them aliens or something like that and he like wakes up one morning and he like there's two girls with him and he fucking wakes one of them up he goes hey where the fuck's my rolex and they're like what he's like where the fuck's my rolex and they're like you don't remember he goes remember what he goes the girl goes we were at some Italian restaurant last night and you got pissed off about the food. You took the watch off, threw it into the pasta and said, fuck you. I got 15 more of these at home and walked out. <laughs> I was like, that's a bad motherfucker right there. <laughs> oh, and, then he forgot, and then he forgot about forgot, it. Forgot about it. Woke up with two aliens. Two aliens and couldn't fucking remember it, dude. Oh, dude, God. Rick, dude, Ric Flair is a G, dude. And then like, there's like another one where it's like, they're talking to his wife. And she was like, Rick wasn't the always most faithful. And they cut back to him. He's like, yeah, I fucked around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dude, God. you got to watch the 30 for 30 for Ric Flair, dude. That shit's hilarious. Um, 
Yeah, dude, listen, man, this has been awesome. Aside from you being fucking late, dude, congratulations. You were the first guest to be way fucking late by an hour, brother. Leave it to me. Um, <laughs> but listen, man, this has been cool. Look, I'm looking forward. April 10th, you're on the yep. Darren Till card. You're, uh, are you main event undercard? I or not know. main event. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna assume that I'm I'm undercard. undercard? I'm just gonna okay. assume that I'm undercard. Yeah. So you can definitely check that on ESPN, ESPN Plus. I believe ESPN is now on Hulu for free, from what I've been seeing. So it's gonna be the first show on ABC. So it's gonna be ABC two. Oh, so it's on ABC. Yeah. ABC two. So is that on their national broadcast then? Yes. Okay, so yeah. you can definitely catch this out on ABC. Ooh, that's probably why that card's so stacked, dude. Oh, they brought out yeah. the big dick energy. Oh, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, we need the showstopper. Call us the native psycho. For real. Get them yeah. in here. <laughs> <laughs> we need an excellent knockout. Listen, dude, uh, once again, everyone, if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. If you're on Facebook, thank you for tuning in. Uh, once again, shout out to our sponsor, joinplayboy.com. Click on the support, sub- support Zero Cool Podcasts. And subscribe. There's a weekly gallery that is up, and it changes every week. Uh, once again, shout out to Bobby from Champions, my grandmother, Mary Lou. Uh, shout out to Manuel Sanchez uh, fighting Patricio Pitbull next week. Jordan Newman also fighting on the same card. I believe I talked about that in the beginning now that I'm saying it. Uh, any other notes? Jordan's uh, fighting? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Jordan Newman's fighting, and then Askren's fighting Jake Paul. April 17th. I was still going to pull that up, but fuck it. We're out of time. Rand's Rand's got to work in the morning, so we'll give him a break. All right, listen, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. That's it. Peace out. Mahalo.